Tonight's show and topic of discussion do not necessarily reflect the opinion of Spaced Out Radio, SOR Media, or its hosts. Listener discretion is advised. Here at Spaced Out Radio, we are about to take you higher. Broadcasting from the Rocky Mountains of Colorado to you listening around the world. Welcome to Spaced Out Saturdays on Spaced Out Radio. You can follow Tessa on our Facebook page at Spaced Out Radio. On Twitter at Tessa TNT. And you can subscribe to her YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio for our archives. Now broadcasting from our Mile High Radio Clubhouse on Spaced Out Saturdays with your host, Tessa Nicole Thomas. Good evening, Spaced Out Radio. Secure your tinfoil hats, buckle down tight, and hold on loosely as we soar over the rocky tops of the La Platas on a Rocky Mountain High, get sucked into the vortex of the Four Corners, and settle down snugly at Mile Marker 419.9 in colorful Colorado. It is Saturday, March 9th, Sunday, March 10th, for those of you on the East Coast and beyond, and this is Spaced Out Radio. Hope you had a rockin' week, an awesome day, and an even better evening. I am your host, Tessa TNT, and I'm live tonight broadcasting from beautiful Colorado. We are 150,000 strong nightly on Spaced Out Radio Network, spacedoutradio.com, Spreaker, Paranormal Radio, Talkstream Live, 99.1 FM, WQEE, noon in Georgia, home of The Walking Dead, 107.7 FM, UPRN, in New Orleans, Louisiana, and Revolution Radio, as well as Deep Talk Radio, which you can find at deeptalkradio.com. Don't forget to head to our website, spacedoutradio.com, where you can peruse the Spaced Out Radio store and read the encounter online, dealing with everything strange, paranormal, and odd. So tonight, I have a treat for all my guides and gals out there. Tonight, we will be talking to and getting to know Mr. Jamie Clark. Jamie was born in Sandusky, Ohio. Jamie had signs early in life that he would someday be helping people with his remarkable talents. As a child, he was concerned about being different from others with what was going on in his mind. With the guidance of his mother, Elaine, also a gifted medium, they began to research and explore the depth of Jamie's emerging talents. Through years of studying and a series of profound revelations, Jamie discovered that he had the gift of psychic intuition and could also communicate messages and feelings between people living and those who have left this phys- physical plane of existence. In other words, he can communicate with those who have loved and lost. Now with thousands of powerful connections made worldwide and years of experience as his guide, Jamie offers this healing phenomenon to those in need of of it most, people searching for life direction and guidance, as well as those seeking answers and closure from family and friends that have passed. Jamie, thank you so much for being on the show again tonight. It's so great to have you. I'm so excited to have you back again. Tessa, thank you. And I think we make a great team and I appreciate what you're doing for others. Seems like you're coming along nicely. Very good. Congrats. I'm so glad you're here again. You were like one of my original guests and I'm so excited to have you back because you know how you feel like you have shortcomings when you first start an endeavor and just to have you back. I'm, I'm very excited. And I, like I said before, I love your energy and I just want to spread it out throughout the world, the universe. <laughs> you know, and I think that that's great is because in seeing what you're able to do, you know, our job is to show people that this is possible so that they can start to work with their own abilities for themselves. To me, everybody's a psychic medium. If you've got a soul, you're a psychic medium. You know, we've all had that gut feeling of that mindscape picture that happens. That's psychic. And for me, you know, I uh, think like you at a young age, I had to, I started doing this at five years old is when I was activated. But I see so many more people nowadays, these past late years, that some of them are 70s and 80s in years and they're open to this. You know, that's the old school back then going, oh, you one of them. 
And now they're coming around going, you know, this psychic medium stuff, this looks fun. And boop, they surprise and impress themselves, which is huge. You know, because to me, that's the biggest gift you can give yourself is the ability to trust your natural abilities. So natural, they're supernatural. It's the <laughs> Super oh. duper natural. And it's mm-hmm. true. And it seems the more and more we go on through the years, the more and more people seem to realize that they do have these certain gifts. And I don't know if it's the sign of the times and the veil thinning and so on and so forth, but people are uh, more aware of it and more open to it and more... Um, open to helping those around them. And that's my big thing is to help each other, raise each other up because the world is hard enough as it is. You know, let's not tear each other down. Let's help raise each other up and help each other in any way we can. And that's a big thing. I think by bringing us together like this, perfect opportunity. You know, when people can sit in comfortable in their own home or wherever they are and just enjoy the vibes, man, get that energy exchange. That's when it becomes even more effective, more powerful and more palpable, you know, because you start getting those feelings and most of us tend to analyze first. I've just learned to go oh, first feeling. I used I trust it because, you know, I used to question it and it was always messed up. Now, as soon as I get it, it's usually correct. And for you, Tessa, because I was five years old when I was activated. When was it for you? What happened with you at your age? Um, I had experiences as a baby, but I don't remember them. My first uh, memory, I won't mention because it was traumatic, but my first psychic um, memory as far as seeing the other side, I was five, almost six, and I heard these footsteps coming down the hallway, and I've always had issues sleeping due to nightmares, recurring nightmares, different things that had happened. Um, and I'm thinking, wow, my mom's really quick. Like, how'd she get past the doorway without me seeing her? Because I was staring out into the hallway. We had this beer clock with the flowing river and, and the forest all lit up. And, and I'm like, how'd she do that? And I'm hearing it get closer and closer. So I'm like, mom, waiting, no response. Mom, still waiting. As soon as I started to say mom, the third time this woman appeared in my doorway and she was like two inches off the floor wearing a... Oh, I would say early 1800s black lace dress and a black fell and um, these old shoes, which I saw one in this antique store last week. And I was like, those are the total shoes that she was wearing. Um, I hope you took a picture of it. Huh? I hope you took a picture of it. No, but I'm, I guarantee they're still there. And I have the money. I could actually buy them and, and put them in my studio because I, I have a big collection here. Pretty soon you won't see the wallpaper. <laughs> I'm noticing that. And so are all of these, are these from different aspects or what? what, what? A lot I of see them the- are. I have That's- a dream catcher. Um, my grandpa's tin of velvet tobacco. It's like so rusted closed you can't even open it. Um Pictures that my daughter have painted, like the alien and the the llamas with laser beams coming out of their eyes and mouth, <laughs> going going to war. Nice. Floyd and Lily going to um, space war. Floyd versus Lily. He's on a space shuttle with his aluminum hat, and Lily's breathing fire from her UFO. And it's things my kids have made for me, and things that have come from my life that have affected me spiritually. Um, I had a rock from my granny's house, but I had to take it out of here because it caused it caused some uh, negative ill effects. <laughs> right. But, nice yeah. is to return it or release it, man, because otherwise that stuff gets toxic depending on how you work with the energies. You know, it's like, oh, sometimes they vibe at a certain rate, like mm, different energy. Yeah, my uh, friend Mooney helped me with some old old school magic, which would have been what my granny would have done. He said, take the stone outside, take a penny and a, I think a penny and a dime, um, and bury those underneath the stone and, um, kind of will the energy away. And, and I did have a lot of negative experiences at her house, not her fault, but just where the house was built on native burial grounds, basically, um, caused different things to happen, not only to me, but to my mother when she was my age as a child. Um, so yeah. I brought it in, didn't realize it till the next night when things went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And then next night realized what had happened. And, you know, he helped me go through that process. But, yeah, it was very, very interesting, to say the least. 
Well, and, you know, it sounds like a lot of that because we're not always aware of what energies we're picking up from other places. And if we don't clean and clear it in some way, you know, you'll get some of those vibe energies on from wherever it's at, Native American or any place. Because, you know, to my awareness, it doesn't matter if it's a brand new house, it still holds the residual experience like a loop in the ethers. Because, you know, ether is more solid than matter and all that kind of good stuff. But within it, you know, being able to tap in, were you picking up a lot of beings at the house? Did you get information psychically or was it fairly neutral? Um, right away, uh, you know, you got the hairs raising and your antennas are up and you're like, okay, what's going on here? And you're looking for anything and everything to happen. And my grandma and my grandpa always denied it. But I, I know that they had the gift as well. But being we were kids, they kind of wanted to keep us from that. Um, first experience I had was seeing these little goblin critters in the chicken yard out my window from uh, my room, dancing around a fire, chitter-chattering, some sort of chant, and some of them were banging on drums, some of them had little spears, and they're dancing around, and all of a sudden they come towards my window. Um... So I jumped back under the sheets, you know, the shield from everything dark and evil with my eyes poking out just so I could see what's going on or pretend like I'm sleeping or whatever. And, um, they looked and looked and looked and then went away. Um, a week later they started chasing my brother every night. Um, the very next day is when I had an encounter with the devil, which a lot of people, even my husband tell me that was not the devil. I'm like, I was not raised in a religious setting but I knew exactly who it was as soon as I saw him. Um, I had this dream that my bed was tilting like this, uh, tilting up and up and up from the headboard and the baseboard is kind of under my mattress. So I'm digging my thumbs in so I don't fall in this hole that's at the end of my bed with fire um, and brimstone burning underneath it. And I wake up and I'm at the end of my bed and I'm thinking, wow, what a realistic dream. And how did I end up down here? And then all of a sudden I smell smoke again, but it's not the fire and brimstone smoke. It's not the velvet tobacco that my grandpa used to smoke. It's like a sweet, probably cherry cigar smoke. And I slowly look over and I don't have a door. I have this lace that goes across generally, but it's tied back. And there's this dark figure standing in my doorway. And he lifts the cigar up to his mouth and takes the puff off of it. And then I can see, like, his hair slicked back. Like, he's the most gorgeous man I'd ever seen. He's wearing this really nice tuxedo. And I used to, like I said before, have nightmares all the time. And my dad would tell me, say, God stands before me, saying to fall behind, and that'll help you go back to sleep, and you won't have nightmares anymore, for that night, at least. Um, I didn't even say it out loud. I said it in my head, and, like, just like that, I was out. I didn't have to deal with them. My mother had the same experience except for he was right by her bed and she had a long lengthy conversation with him. So I find comfort in the fact that he's getting further and further away and, um, and the fact that I feel open enough to share this with my kids in case they ever experience it, they'll know what to do and hopefully he'll get even further away. You know, and that's a big gift is to give him that knowledge and experience. There was one time in my life many years ago where I was kind of in that dynamic. Back then, we're the warriors of light. We're going to destroy the darkness. Bring it up. Oh, shoot. <laughs> the Let me time, tell you something, brother. <laughs> oh, it was, it was interesting. I never, ever did that again. The following day, I worked at a little Italian restaurant. And it was about 4 o'clock, and we were just opening, and no one else was in the restaurant. Everyone else was behind, you know, in the kitchen working. And this gentleman comes in by himself, and... He looked like a cross between Danny DeVito and Kramer. I'm like, what the? F it just it was weird, man. And it, yeah, it was just. And he comes walking in and said, "Hi, how are you?" He's like, "Fine." I'm like, "Well, uh, what can I get you to drink? What would you like?" He's like, "Well, you asked me to be here." I'm like, uh, "What do you mean? I don't know you." He's like, "You asked me to be here." Whoa, man, I was electrified. It was freaking freaky. Very pleasant, very nice. Talked to him about an hour. I don't remember most anything that was said except for a few things. One, I'm a nice guy. Don't ever turn your back on me or I'll cut your throat. Like, whoa, God. Just, <laughs> just a matter of fact, hey, boom, boom, boom. And 
after that, I never, ever, ever did that again. And, you know, for myself in, in doing a lot of the scientific studies with the University of Arizona and a few other parapsychological research foundations, puts a little bit more solidness to this. And realizing that our thoughts are connected to the matrix, the unified field, the oneness. So whether you like something or not, if you're thinking about it, you're vibing with it. That challenge became strong because most of us fear the darkness and understandably. But the very thing when you keep fearing it, you're only intensifying the energy. And so in a way, it nourishes that. And so, you know, for me, in doing this, because I do the psychic mediumship 24-7 and, and for the past 19 years, God, I love this. I don't feel like I've had to work a day. That's amazing. But being able to make sure that I'm always safe, I don't hope and believe I know that I'm safe because doing this all the time, I'm not going to go, well, I hope I, it's a, a, not a chance. And so anyone who comes through to me is only on the productive channel or I don't exist. Otherwise, you'll start cleaning up a lot of messes. And I'm like, nope, freak that. Once I started doing this and, you know, putting those parameters around it, it's all about intent. Because, you know, Tessa, what you were sharing, wait a minute, those covers, that's my protection. Oh, really? That's my shield. shield. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but look, it seemed to work. My point is if you give it validity and empowerment, it vibes with that. And you're, you're just laying there, and all of a sudden, well, they stopped. They didn't bug me, right? They left, and then they were bugging my brother for a lot of So the good thing is, is that's how people can be is whether you're in the bed and you've got the covers or you want to be in the white light, any of that, whatever works for you so that you know. I just have it on autopilot all the time. So if I forget in some way, my ignorance is not a, a challenge because my team has got connections to me. You know, every once in a while, there was a, uh, a person who had, I guess, uh, <clears throat> texted uh, the other night, and she was apparently a psychic medium, <laughs> and she was trying to tap into my energy field from a distance. She called later going, <clears throat> uh, I, I was blocked. I'm like, right. And it was just an etheric. She didn't try to call. It was an etheric trying to get mental telepathy. And my point was, that was a nice validation for me to go, yep, nope, if that's not the most productive, and I'm sure the person was amazing, but my team has always got my back as well as myself. And so for that, you know, white light essence, that kind of a safety mechanism is huge. You know, I started realizing a lot of how we ask the universe for things is very key to our success or challenge. And what I mean by that is, you know, I had the right approach, but doing this work my whole life, I was always doing this for the universe. Universe, keep me protected, keep me protected, keep me protected. Because I needed to be kept protected from, you know, the oddball things. And she, my master guy, was like, Jamie, that's a very nice intent. However, if you keep asking the universe to keep you protected, it will continue to bring you more circumstances to keep protected about. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? I, I need to be kept protected. His response was, well, how about rather than ask for protection, you give gratitude for safety. Dick. I'm like, that sounds like semantics, playing on words. And his approach, the way you approach the universe, it approaches you. There is no good or bad to the universe. It's all but an experience. Everything's good. And it only holds the value that we place upon it. You know, and I think bringing up an interesting thing, have we talked about karma um, we have, but I was just thinking, um, there's a lot of people here that probably don't know you because like I said, you came in at the beginning of my radio career. Um, can you tell us, uh, where yours kicked off and how your mother was so open and amazing to help you with that and what steps you took to empower yourself? You know, and that was a big thing. I did apparently for myself need to open up at a very young age. And a lot of people seem to be activated around five years old. And so for me, my initiation, my activation was I was coming from the living room into the kitchen and my mom was a couple of feet behind me. And as soon as I crossed that threshold from the living room to the kitchen, I was stopped in my tracks and Floating up above, off to the left, over the kitchen table was Jesus, the Christ, his arms down, angled, looking at me, smiling, and he had spaceships over his shoulders. And I was just like, boom, 
this energy washed over me. And it always seems to be a warmth. I don't get the really chilly chillies. It's always a warmth. And from that moment on, I was activated. And my mom, because it was about a 10-second vision, and she's freaking out, going, are you okay? What's going on? Because I was just sitting there like this, looking, and she wasn't seeing anything. So after that, I came back in, we went over to the typewriter, you know, and typed it all up. And at the end, I took it out and wrote, P.S., I was not afraid. I don't know why I needed to do that, but I did it. And she's like, great, perfect. So being able to have that activation at such a young age, and my mom was right there with me. My mom, an amazing psychic medium. She was gifted her whole life as well. And in doing that, you know, she would say things and two hours later, stuff would happen. And I was like, oh, are you making that happen? How's that working? She's like, no, here's what I'm doing. And so it became the practicality of spirituality. For me, I love to give tools and techniques and I need to be able to use the spiritual stuff on a daily basis. I don't have 80 hours a day to meditate, man. I already did that. Now I'm a walking meditation. Literally, I'm in this world, but not of it. I've got the complete receptivity of the universal oneness. But within that, that kind of a, a connection to me and being able to be accepted and embraced for my abilities and my whole family use them. Everybody. Even my dad, the very, very, very intelligent man who was an engineer, always had just that gut reaction, that gut feeling, and it was usually correct. And so being able to thrive with that and see everyone else be able to just be them and we all got along great, that was powerful. But not only that, I saw how my mom could share information with people she didn't even know and it would change their lives. I'm like, what are you doing? How, 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 how what? And so for people that didn't even know her, you know, they'd be walking by or whatever the conversation would start up and they didn't realize she was using her abilities until she'd start sharing a few things. And they're like, uh, yeah, how, how do you know that? So she'd share a little bit, you know, I'm a psychic and I just feel people's energy. And she was always light about it, but very informative. And so we studied for 20 years sending each other messages and mental telepathy and all of those. And out of that, I've created a... Uh, a training card deck called Psychic Evolution. And so it's really cool because in doing that, and my mom and I doing it for so many years, I learned that the more emotion you set behind that picture, the word, the energy, the stronger it gets for people. And the Xenar cards, that's the, the square, the circle, the triangle, and the wavy lines kind of thing. Those are great. It's an amazing tool. But it also presented the decline effect, going, there's a square, there's a circle, as a try, you got, you know, it's like, eh, yeah. And I noticed for myself when my mom and I were doing it, we were vibing with animals or scenes, nature or spiritual loved one validations, all of these things that I mentally was emotionally connected to. And so in doing that, I was able to start seeing to go, OK, you know what, as the sender, if I'm sending the information, not only would I see in this case, I'd pick a lion. But with that lion, not only would I see that, I would feel it and I would send it. Here's the Serengeti. Here's the lion that's in the circus. Here's this ability in the zoo. The more energy I could pulse with that, the stronger the energy gets for the person who's receiving it. Because we're always sending and receiving. But in doing that and getting that clarity more effectively, learning to trust that First thing that touches your mind is the biggest key to success. You know, like I do, it's the training and discipline. In the beginning, uh, am I making this stuff up? Am I, uh, until you get an end result, then it's like, oh, oh, okay. So when it's feeling like that, it's usually playing out like that. And when it feels like this, it's playing out like this. Okay, so on the law of averages, you went psychic, huh? Because when it's feeling like that, it's usually playing out like that. I needed to simplify it. And so for my mom and I to do this and work with all the different dynamics was huge. It got me to where I'm at and I'm ready for the next level. Amazing. Not only that, my mom and I, many years, almost 30 years ago, uh, have written children's books, The Adventures of Roko and Tuki, The Kids from Mars. And so we've got five books. I am now just starting to get them going. We're going to do digital and all that. I've already got hats and shirts and a whole clothing line and all of those things. And the Intergalactic Space Council. So it's all about love. We have Roko and Tuki who are from Mars and they're little, little grays. And we have a variety of others how we co-create these experiences and these realities. And it's a lot of fun. Plus, I also 
had the children's books, but I took it to the next level after my mom graduated life. I called death graduation because there is no dead. I never, ever talked to the dead. There isn't any. Just tuning into a different channel. But within that, I have also created the comic book, The Intergalactic Adventures. And it's really cool because we have the reptilians who are rapidly growing species, and they are growing so quickly they're becoming planet stealers. So they've captured a dwarf star, taken it into the seventh parallel, and are creating their own solar system by the planets that they steal. So we have the Intergalactic Space Council. They're out throughout the whole universe, other universes. Literally, I'll guarantee you as soon as you're sitting in front of that screen, this is not the only universe at all. There is infinite. And, and a lot of the scientific studies of what I did learned a lot of the holographic universe, that dynamic that everything's connected, we're all one. And, you know, a lot of experiences during those scientific studies I learned from one, for me, that's, I don't know nothing for nobody, just my own perspective, but I'll share it. And that was for most of my life, I would hear as Archangel Michael is the warrior, he's going to destroy the darkness and cut the cords and all that. And in the back of my soul, I was like, how is that possible that on the angelic realm of love and compassion, we're going to have a murderer and a destroyer? And so in doing the scientific studies and all that good stuff, it came to light that he is not a warrior of destruction. He's a warrior of love. And you will vibe with this energy or you're gone. I'm like, that makes more sense. That is something that's fascinating. You know, and again, just my awareness, but it made more productive sense to go, well, yeah, because otherwise, as we perceive a good and bad are right alongside each other and the darkness can overtake the light and through those natural laws, the darkness can never overtake the light. You know, it's kind of like the ocean and the droplets. Those dark droplets at the bottom are no less than the droplets near the top where it's light. And we, do we realize it's having its own awareness of where it's at? And if you're in that dark droplet, you must want to be there. I love you. You can stay there as long as you want to. You're not made to do anything and allowed to do everything. And so working with those natural laws, these universal principles and laws, it was the fact that those dark droplets at the bottom of the ocean that are dark and murky cannot ascend into the higher light droplets without matching that light. If you're at this level, you shine with this. If you're here, you shine with that. If you're here, you shine with that. It became the law of equivalence, no more and no less than that with which you comprehend the universe to be, always perfectly aligned. And so in getting that, you know, the only way would, dark droplets were taken over the ocean is in an oil spill. The rest of it was a vibrational match. And those vibrations are what we've come to see things as karma. And I'm not sure how many people are into karma, but if I can just have some fun and share some, if there is karma. Just for me, a basic meaning of karma. If Tessa, if I can share that. Okay. I'm like, ah, I don't want to ramble if that's not productive. But <laughs> to me, a, a basic meaning of karma is an action creates a karmic debt that it needs to be repaid or balanced in some way. Is that decent? Okay. So if there's karma, in this case, Tess, what does that say if you're living your own beautiful life and doing you and there's these other two people in their own life experiences and one of those people hurts the other one? So, of course, that person who just did the hurting has a karmic debt that he needs to be repaid or balanced in some way. Okay. What does that say if you and your own life are cosmically and karmically chosen to come in and co-create an experience through karma to affect that person like they affected the first one, right? What I didn't say was that original hurting of those two people was their completion of the karmic debt. How are you supposed to know when a debt is paid? And if that was the completion of the debt, why are you chosen to come in and slap the crap out of somebody else? You know, to me, it was like, God, because if it's that way, then it's all about negative and then it's all about abuse and then one and then you're never going to complete it until she, who's very insightful and patient, shared a lot of insight with me to go, OK, that makes more sense. And so how we've come to see it as karma is the natural law, the equivalence, not only that, but any natural law is never selective of itself, meaning it's like the soil in the ground. That soil of itself does not question anything at all. What kind of person, murderer, healer, happy, sad, green, orange, purple, yellow, it does not question. And it doesn't question what seeds you plant. If you're planting that seed, you must want it to grow. 
Now, the seemingly thin, empty air, so that your viewers and listeners can know just how I do it, when I read for people psychically and mediumship, I am connected to the oneness, as we all are. But the seemingly thin, empty air of nothingness is pure God soil. Every thought you have is a seed you're planting into the soil. Your attention to those thoughts, to those seeds, are what waters them. And each seed holds the integrity of its own blueprint and already has the blueprint of full manifestation of each and every seed or it would not grow. The oak tree stays the oak tree. The lemon tree stays the lemon tree. So in learning to be able to plant the seeds of consciousness within your soulscape of awareness will bring a more productive energy in a way that I've learned the best that I can to plant more productive seeds, not the destructive. Because on average, most of us have the right intent, but when we approach the, the universe, we tend to approach the problem more so than the solution. Meaning on average, we all want people who love us and we all want abundance. But the average person who does that approaches it like this. I know what I don't want. I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be alone. You know, and even though... Be okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so for me, you know, learning to accept your reality the best that you can and let others co-create. It's not manipulation. It's co-creation. And I learned as people were starting to you know, get those experiences, it was cause and effect. Cause is your thought, the effect is your reality. Those who talk about lack, live it. Those who talk about abundance, live it. And you don't see successful people going around saying they're a failure. No luck, no coincidence, precision on the universe's part. You know, and we've all, for me, I used to, you've heard of cutting the cords and the tags, you know, I got, I got cut cords, man. I was like a freaking ninja. And I would still get similar stuff of the cords I was cutting. And I'm like, she, why, I don't understand this, why I'm cutting these cords of the negative as I'm perceiving it, but why am I still getting similar things? And his response was, well, Jamie, you have the right intent. Once you have cut that cord, you have certainly cut the connection to the person, experience, or circumstance that was connected. However, once you have cut that cord, you've cut half of it off and left the other half in your energy field. And I'm like... Ah, uh, so well, what am I supposed to do if I'm not supposed to cut cords? I've got to cut the connection. And his response was, well, how about rather than cutting the cords, you simply and completely release them? I was like, wow. You know, so he's he's not from this universe either. And you only sound like a nut job till it's validated. That's the point. I want to share as much as I can. And if I do what I do, because, again, everybody can, is what level do you want to take it to, you know, maybe it puts a little bit more validity to what I'm saying. That's why the scientific studies all this to go, man, everyone could do it. It's quantifiable. Yes. Um, we do have a few questions from the chat room. Uh, one of them was on the last topic you were talking about, which is the dark and the light. And you can't really have one without the other. You have to have, like, this balance, really. Um, is what BTO was saying, which I kind of agree with. You can't have one without the other, and there's kind of got to be a balance there. Here's the interesting thing. Have you ever been to the zero-point field? I've gone to a place that is pitch, but there's nothing, nothing. It was black. I didn't know if something was right here or it, I, no, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. It was freaking freaky, man. I've never been to that. And, you know, I've got to forget offhand what that name is. But it was about uh, a little bit of time and I'm starting to freak out because I, I, there was no sound. There's no nothing. It's just blackness. And as I'm freaking out, off to my left-hand side opens this circle and a golden light comes shining out. And there's these three people, these three beings standing there. And I'm like... That's the tunnel of light that people see. Holy crap. And then boop, I was taken out of that. They call it the abyss. And if you ever have that, you'll see, well, that light and darkness is good. But at that place, there is no light at all. At all. So I don't know how that's possible except that it is. You know? yeah, I've heard and, people actually create rooms like that to enhance the psychic ability. And like it's so dark, you can't even see your hand right in front of your face, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. 
There. Now I can, I don't like the dark, man. That's just <laughs> I grew up going, eh, just give me a little bit of light on that side there. I'm good. Otherwise, yeah. you know, movies and stuff, you just start amping that crap up. Oh, shoot. And now I don't watch that kind of stuff <laughs> anymore because now realizing the reaction to my thoughts, whether you want it or not, if you're sending that vibe out, you're on the ethers. If you don't clear your channels or tune into the specific channels, that's a big thing. You know, it's always a learning process, but that learning curve can be a lot more productive. It doesn't have to be so destructive. Right. Um, BTO was asking, so when you speak of activation, what are you referring to? Also, I guess you have guides. Who who are your guides? Well, I have a lot. I need all the help that I can get. My master guide is Chi, and I probably have over 100 guides at least. No one's the same physically. They're not going to be the same metaphysically. So each of my guides have their own expertise on any circumstances or dynamics that are being offered or presented. Meaning if I have an electrical problem, I'm not going to call a pool person to work on it. I've got an electrician that's going to work on it. If I have a pool, then I'll have the pearl, you know, who, person who works on the pool. That kind of appropriateness, they know their expertise. They know how to get that insight and information around and so we all have guides, whether you're aware of it or not, it's certainly fine. But they're very patient. And to me, they don't really care what you call them. I asked my guide, my master guide, you know, what's your name? And he said, Chi. I'm like, oh, it's cute. Life force energy. Prove it to me, please. In my physical reality, I'd like to know that this is real. 20 minutes later, he did. In my face. I was like, got it. Perfect. And so from that moment on, you know, I've learned and, and connected with more beings of my team. And it's not just humans. There's ETs, there's angels, JC, and many other people. That's the point is everyone has the connection. And in doing these scientific studies, that holographic universe, I'm into the spirituality and quantum physics now becoming spiritual physics. And I don't know if, you know, I'm sure that you heard there's a little saying in quantum physics What's known in one place may be known in all places at the same time. What's known in all places may be known in one place at the same time. And I asked Chi, I'm like, how's that possible? And he put it just like you and I are doing. He's like, well, Jamie, it's kind of like this. As soon as you're on that Internet web, like we have an IP address on the Internet web, you have an SP address, a soul print address on the universal web. And in that connection... I'm starting to wander. Can you, can you, what was the other, uh, her question or their question? Um, he's asking about your guides and hold on. I just oh, the activation. It. Yes. Yeah. That's a soul sensitized. Again, if you've got a soul, you're a psychic medium. I just had it amplified from that moment on. And if I'm going to be amped, I was learning from the best man. That was huge. And now all these years later, now I'm 53. It's like, Holy cow, that makes sense. All the spaceships over Jesus' shoulders is this is not the only planet that the Christ consciousness has connected with. And so, you know, in doing that, and JC, because my thing is, is do you really think that there's only one Jesus that goes around when more than one person on this planet calls on him at the same time? And I'm willing to bet there's more than just one on this planet that does that. He's not doing this. <laughs> Gotta go, got a gunshot, yeah. No, man, it's like this now, because she, as he was sharing, how that works is I, you know, for you and me, I, in my show, I as the host of my radio show that's in Phoenix, Arizona, through the internet web, I am with each and every one of you right here, right now, like each and every one of you are here with me. So now we see there is no distance, because it's right here. Now, there is no time as well, because if I have a person call in from Australia, which is about 17 hours ahead, or from Hawaii, which is a couple of hours behind, but when we're talking through the web, when is it? Now. There is only this eternal moment. And so that web, like we have the IP address on the internet web, that soul print address on the universal web is never lost and always found. That's how our loved ones know us. For me, out of 7.5 billion people, They'll come right to you, and they're coming to you just like me. I always say, if you want to talk out loud, if you want to talk in your mind, you want to light candles, do anything good. It's whatever works for you. Find your own unique way. 
to enjoy that conversation, that communication. And the more you use your abilities, the more effective you realize it's first nature to the essence of our being, not second nature. Too many people settle for second best, man. It's who we are. I don't know how to be anything different than me. This is not only what I do, this is who I am. You know, and the first thing I could say I was born to do. In my whole life, I'd hear other people, I was born to do this. I'm like, God, good for you. Hell for looking for me. What was I born to do? And then the you know, essence of who I am, always there. So just had to be me. And brought up like you, more accepted. So it wasn't, oh, great. I empowered myself. And as a kid, going out in public, saying things to adults. You know, hi, I'm a little seven, eight-year-old. Hi, I know I don't know you, but can I say something to you? Like, oh, sure. And they're like, holy, how the, what? The? And so I said, oh, you know, we all have guides. I'm just, need to be a validation. Does that help you? And they're like, oh. Uh. And so I got hooked, man. When I could see that reaction, that was huge. But also in the beginning, when I was apparently doing better than what I was aware of, they would start to cry. And I'm like, I, I, am I doing something wrong? Was that a bad thing? And in actuality, it was a good thing. They're crying. We're doing our job, as I always say, man, because then you pull it out of the, oh, good guesswork to, holy crap, that that's way too precise and too accurate. I'm like, okay, good, right, good. Let's keep moving along. Same old information, just an updated way. Yeah, it was something they needed to hear. It brought tears to their eyes, but it wasn't sad tears. It was happy tears. It was, and that somebody else who doesn't even know them, basically the universe is listening to them because a lot of times they'd look at me like, how the frick would you know that? But I was a kid, so I'd just be like, hey, you know, it's just this way, and it was real simple and easy. And they weren't afraid. They were amused and uneasy at the fact that some kid's going to be able to know what's going on in their life experience and a person who they're dealing with or whatever the case was. But it was huge because a number of them, you know, a lot of us pray. And that type of a circumstance was his, in this case, a particular person, his validation to go, this is a young kid and there's no way. And for that to happen, I could feel his energy shift. He went from a frustration when he was standing there to an exhilaration of freedom to go, God, it's being heard. Thank you. And so for me, I've learned if I pray for, if I ask for anything from the universe, I give gratitude that I've received it because the universe is always for us and never against us. So I found if I would ask for things without giving gratitude that I received it, the universe is doing this. Oh, Jamie, you see it as someday. You must want it someday. I'm going to keep it someday. Like, God, when's it going to happen? <laughs> Act as though I am. And I will be. It's vibing with that. you know. And then it's the no luck or coincidence. It's precision on the universe's part. And you know, you need the practicality of spirituality, being able to use this on a daily basis. For me, I already did my meditation at a younger age, so I don't have time to do that now. I've got, you know, we're all going to do our stuff, but I've been able to use the practicality of spirituality daily. And that's the point is, you know, I share with people, you need to know it's real for you. I shout it from the rooftops because it truly saved my life. Had I not get and ask for things and give gratitude, right, and get out of the way and you'll present it, universe, freaking prove it. Because poverty sucks. And if I've got to have nothing to be spiritual, show me, please. And that morning it did. And it gave me, by the end of that evening, the very thing, the very specific thing, in this case, which was a white rose, that... That morning, I was sitting there because I didn't have a car. I rode a bike. I looked good, but I didn't date. And so, you know, I was I was freaking pissed. My life that morning was going to change one way or another. And as I sat there, my thing was this. Universe, all right, right? Ask for things. Get clear about what I want and give gratitude that I've received it. And then you'll bring it to me. You're on. Because I am not saying a word to anybody at all. You work your magic, and if you can get me that white rose, because I haven't seen that in a while, if you can get it to me by tonight, the end of tonight, without me saying a word, I'll know this stuff is real, and I'll shout it from the rooftops. I rode my bike, and I used to work at a place called Malarkey's here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I was bartending. And this friend of mine comes walking in the door, and I hadn't seen her in a couple of months. 
And she's walking in going, oh, Jamie, you know, I was driving by and I saw your bike chained up to the back. And I just wanted to come in and have a drink. And, oh, I just wanted to bring you this. It was a fucking white rose. A white rose. One. One. Not a dozen. I hadn't seen my friend in months. Her that day out of all the flowers, out of all the colors and all of the amounts of those, she brought the exact one white rose to me. Now, it didn't change my life instantly. I rode my booty home at 3 o'clock in the morning. But when I got home, I physically took that out of my backpack and set it right where I saw it in my mind sight. But after that, it was on. That's why I'm still here going, no, you don't have to put it to that kind of level, man. I was just, that that was my life experience. You can do it in a light day-to-day thing, but get your validations. Once you do, all right, then there's something to this. There's some validity instead of, oh, yeah, it's all spiritual. It is all spiritual. It's what value do you place upon it? Right. You know, so it's, it's a whole different vibe. And again, when you can enjoy this and not be one of them... Good. I hear voices all day long, but people seek me out. They don't fear me. It's what energy do you come from? There are some sane people in the insane asylum. They just don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, Ah. it it gets kind of confusing because, like, when I hear voices, they always come through as my voice, but I can recognize the different energies. And I'm like, okay, I can hear my voice speaking to me, but I know that's somebody else. That's not my thought process. That's somebody else's or whatnot. So it can get confusing. Um, but that's the point is the mental wandering and making stuff up and when a communication is happening. And it's the same with our loved ones. For me, my awareness is, is when we mentally wander and wishful think, it tends to come from the inside out. Like, okay, do, 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 do. All right, there we go. But when we're being communicated with, and most of the time it's in my thought voice too, the way that you talk to yourself in your mind, it's your own connection. But the connection is, do, 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 boom! When they tune you in because you didn't saunter back, when that tune in drops into your mind, that's usually your loved ones or your guides or the inside of information you're picking up about the person, experience, or circumstance. Yeah, you're talking to a total stranger, and all of a sudden this thought comes to you, and you're like, should I say it or not? And then you say it to them. Um, well, where did that come from? Well, it just came to me, and you know, I was kind of worried about saying it to you, but I felt like I really should. And their response was? It was something they really needed to hear. That's when it loses the sting to go, whoa, wait a minute. You're a really nice person, Tessa. And and how do you, was that psychic, spiritual stuff? Was that thing? You, yeah, how'd you do that? Because that's exactly what I was thinking. And when you can do that in front of them and they didn't say anything, now it's even more powerful. But not only that, when you can share that insight in any way without judgment, you know, I'm very honored. A lot of people come before me and they're like, Jamie, I've never, ever said this to anybody. And I'm like, yes. And? Yeah. Because, you know, I'm like, yeah, I've probably done that in many other in other lifetimes. Yeah, perfect strangers, like too. I've never said this to anybody, but I'm going to tell you this. And you're like, why do they tell me this stuff? But I think, you know, we have that certain gift where they feel comfortable with telling us and we're kind of like an outlet for them. When they can't say it to anybody else, they could say it to us and get it out. And then we get the message from the other side and give them the answer that they're looking for. Like, like you're saying, it's some sort of closure, healing for them. It's something they need to hear to move on from this point they've been stuck in for the longest time. A lot of a new beginning Mm -hmm. for the old pattern to go, let it go. Let's start going for the new one. Mm -hmm. You know, we get these new directions in our new life experience we have that, but a lot of us will tend to come from what we have been through rather than what's coming up for us. You know what? Because I sure hope I don't get that crap again. And I just <laughs> keep the same because you're coming from more of what you don't want rather than what you do want. And most like, of us dang, have- I just shot craps again. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, it, once you st- I started seeing that and I shifted it. And once I shifted it, I'm like, OK, so things can be changed. That approach I was doing was fine, but now I'm getting better results, more effective, efficient results, you know, and also being able to help people to help themselves. Because to me, nobody needs to be fixed. Nobody needs to be saved, shown the power within, self-realized, and begin to live life more than survive it. And that's huge. And to me, you know, there's a lot that 
uh, like the Dalai Lama said, the only constant in the universe is change. And my thing is as well, that that certainly is that. But also there's a couple of other things that to my awareness are in this universe that are constant. One is love. Two is energy. It cannot be created nor destroyed, which tells you it's constant. And three, change. Three constants in the one universe. Learn to love the energy of change and you'll begin to live life more than survive it. You know, and for me, I had to because I got so good at surviving life. It was wearing me out, man. I was just like, God, no, I got 12 hours of sleep. I'm, I'm white. And then as I started doing the best I could to nourish myself, I became a lot more empowered. Except today's like today has been a very busy day and, and I appreciate your patience with me. But, you know, it's that type that I am honored because when I can do this all day long and this is truly what I was born to do. That's my high is to watch other people empower themselves and live, man, like a crackhead for my spirituality. Four readings. <laughs> <laughs> as much healing as I give, man. I'm not stupid. I need the healing just like I give. And I, for me, I with the mediumship, you know, I had to watch my whole family go one by one every two years from cancer. That was challenging for me. All I could do is watch them go and for that, I was like, you know what? Frick that. If I can't help my family, I'm going to help this entire planet and myself, and I'm doing it. So, again, you know, it's a win-win. Some of us come from the pain in order to try to do that. I did that for me. I don't repeat it. I now changed it for the most part because, you know, like I do, as we grow up with things, you either perpetuate that pattern or you shift it. Yeah. And. BTO is saying changes aren't permanent, but change is. And change is the only thing that stays the same. Otherwise, you know, don't really count on anything staying that way. Um, but he also had another question. Who is your team and what do you mean by autopilot? And with regards to the white light, what do you feel it is? And what about the matrix? Do you feel it's about collective oneness, which I consider to be it false is. oneness? What, what, what do you, okay, what does he mean by a false oneness? To me, everything is with an ocean of consciousness. The ocean is the droplet. The droplet is the ocean. When you graduate, you know who you're going to find? You. You are the oneness. The oneness is you. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, that's very valid for his point, I'm sure. But to me, mm, we are all connected. We're all interconnected. But the, what was his comment? The... Um, he was, oh, about the change? Yeah. Or, um, he said, uh, hold on, let me scroll back here. It was not too far away. Um, changes aren't permanent, but change is, which is a Rush lyric, basically. Oh, okay, that's cool. Good. Yeah, perfect. Plus, again, that change, but also, you know, a few other consistencies or constants that are in the universe that most don't address. And that's, you know, scientifically being proven that, well, energy, this whole energy, everything's energy. Great. Well, that tells you it can neither be created nor destroyed. So it's always been and it always is a constant or it wouldn't be a constant, basically. So, you know, it's the same old information, but a little bit of updated way to go. Yeah, but let's pick this part a little bit more. Let's empower ourselves and bring some more interest and information to it. And I know, you know, doing this my whole life, that the more I know, the more I know. I don't know nothing, man, but I'm learning and I'm thriving with it because we're always growth seeking beings. To me, no matter how many dreams, how many aspirations in life I have, once I attain them, I have more. So half the fun's the journey getting there. And most are like, yeah, this is freaking great. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. You know, I no longer survive it so much. I live it a lot more with fullness and happiness, not God. I no longer live each day as if it's the last. Well, I'm going to be freaking burnt out. I live it like it's the first day of my life and expand from there. <laughs> Wide-eyed openness like the little baby's going, everything's new. Woo-hoo! Exactly. What's that? Now, what put it in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, all of those just tactile senses, all of those things that the children do, we do physically and metaphysically. All of those physical senses, we have the metaphysical senses. It's all one. 
Yeah, and that question was kind of like a, a several part question. Who is your team? What do you mean by autopilot? Uh, yeah. Here, what here's the what do you feel the white light is? You know. Can yeah, you white light autopilot? identification of all the spectrums of the colors. For just for me, okay, I, I do TV and all that kind of stuff. And one time I was interviewing uh, the person for the uh, Bill Holman for the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull. So I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's a pretty cool skull. And we're sitting there. We were talking the whole time in Sedona, and he let me touch that skull. As soon as I put my hands on it, whoom, all of my chakras went white. I'm like, what? The, uh, you know, uh, what just happened? Because of you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, blue. You know, all that kind of good stuff. And I asked Chi. I'm like, Chi, what's going on? Because that night. As before I went to sleep, I literally I was closing my eyes and I could see light coming out. of. I'm like, holy crap. And so in being able to understand it, because she was like, well, Jamie, as the chakras are filtration systems, they just filter information. And there are many more outside and inside of us than the chakras. It's not just seven. But within that. As you filter through that information, if you're at the root chakra, the base chakra, that's the red. So you're on the red spectrum, which is good. But he shared with me, every chakra is white. So no matter what chakra I read it, it has the full integration of every vibrational frequency of information with each chakra. So I'm lazy. I keep it easy. Now the autopilot, the auto well, button. I hate to interrupt. But we yes, do have to go to our first break, and we'll be right back after these messages. So you guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Looking for nighttime adventure? Old school radio that delves into everything out of the norm. Then check us out at Spaced Out Radio. This is Dave Scott. Every Monday through Friday, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, we're going to take you on a wild ride ranging from conspiracies to true crime and every ghost, alien, and Sasquatch story in between. We're always live, and we're always interactive with you. So join us at spacedoutradio.com, where together, we own the night. Hey, guess what? You can now get your brand new Spaced Out Radio swag at spacedoutradio.com. We've brought the store back with all new items for you to pick out and pick up for yourself, your family, or friends. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, we got it all. All you have to do is head to our website and click on store. Choose what you want and it's shipped to you. The Spaced Out Radio store is right there for you. Come shop with us at spacedoutradio.com. Then we can own the night together. So you love talk radio. Then you'll love talkstreamlive.com. Talkstream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to talkstreamlive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. On the first Tuesday of every month, I encourage you to come along for a journey with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. Together, we will take a look at how to access the highest expression of yourself and change your life, consciousness, ET contact, health, and wellness. We can talk about it all. So come along for a spiritual ride with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You, only on Spaced Out Radio. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best $5 a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. If you're heading to Vancouver, make sure you stop by the official bar of Spaced Out Radio. The Moose Vancouver. 
It's the place to party in YVR at the corner of Nelson and Granville. The Moose Vancouver is always up to speed with a kitchen staff that serves great food. All food on the menu, $6.95 to $8.95. There's a reason the Moose Vancouver is recognized as one of the hottest spots on the West Coast. Get your horns up for the Moose Vancouver. Hey, this is Canadian Paranormal Investigator Mike Moore. The third Wednesday of every month, I'll be teaming up with Dave Scott to bring you Ghosts of the Great White North. Each month, we will bring on guests from across Canada to discuss their ghostly encounters. Canada is a paranormal hotbed with stories you've never heard, so we're going to bring them to you. So get comfy on your Chesterfield, grab a donut, and join us, eh? A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream. Play. Unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there, this is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month, where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything has an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. You can follow Tessa on Twitter at Tessa TNT, on our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio, and our website is spacedoutradio.com. Now, back to Spaced Out Weekend host, Tessa Nicole Thomas. Here's a sound again, voices dancing in my head, smile. Hey guys, welcome back and thanks so much for joining us this evening. Tonight we are joined by the amazing Jamie Clark. Um, and we had left off on a question from BTO. Jamie, welcome back. Thank you. Um, so we had gone through, okay, autopilot. I think that's what we left off on, right? Yes, yes. And autopilot, <clears throat> excuse me, for me, because I've always done what it takes to activate and all that. So every morning, I would take about 30 minutes through my visuals and all of that to get all the symbols that are in my energy field and all of the frequencies and all of that amplified, you know, and I got to the point where I was like, oh, I'm doing this, but man, I just, it's, I'm already working from the time I get up. And so I asked Chi, I'm like, Chi, I'm activating, but I feel like I'm working every morning just to get activated is there anything that i can do so i'm not having to work so hard and he's like well jimmy yeah it certainly is how about if you create a white button in your mind's eye and what he had me do is okay know how you feel when you're psychically on and amped up exactly how that feels i'm like okay i know exactly how that feels he's like okay that very feeling right now that you're activated on, you're going to, when you push that white button in your mind's eye, you're going to be instantly activated to 
what I feel like is instantly on. I went from 30 minutes to 30 seconds in being able to do that and just as effective because for me, you know, I need to know whatever way is going to get there, I'll get to the end result. And so for Chi to give me a lot of tools and techniques in order to become a lot more efficient, that was huge. And for the autopilot is my intent is, is even if I don't remember to do something in that way, it's already on and activated. The intent is perpetuated consistently. You know, and I found for myself that the intent is the major thing behind all of those things that we do. You've heard of the saging, of course. You know, and people will do that. It's some people. Like, and they're out of here in the back of their mind. You're like, God, I hope this is working. And the other side's like, you don't believe that, dude. You yeah, just throw it out there. So for me, you know, I was talking to Chi, and it doesn't matter what you do. If giving the feather, doing the smoke is your intent, that if I do this, it chokes them off or it gets rid of them, you could use a feather, a cross, a Bible, or a Superman doll and be just as effective. It's what power do you give it? That kind of an energy became huge because I needed to know where my power is, which is all within for all of us, but where it was going, how I was proceeding in my spiritual growth. So it became a lot more effective at what I wanted to not have to worry about, which was the little things of activation and then I'm always on and I'm always safe. And if you're going to do this work consistently, please make sure that you have your own tools and techniques to keep you safe, not protected, safe. For me, it works productively. Yeah, me as well. Like I have my cross, my St. Michael medallion. I also have another one being sent to me, but these are things I feel like protect me and kind of, I don't know, boost my faith in myself or whatever it is that you need to have more of that protection around you or that belief in yourself that you are protected. Um, whatever your belief system is, is what you should put into play, I believe, as far as that goes. That's the point. There's as many worlds as there are perceivers. Nobody sees it the same, yet each just as real and just as valid. So I'm like, I don't know anything better for anybody. I know maybe differently, but not better. And sometimes from that different perspective, you might get other information. Mm. And then it's like, I heard that crap a thousand times, but click. You know what? That's the first time I get that. Good. Perfect. You know, let's keep moving along. Here we go. And, you know, it's nice if, if I can just be myself because that's all I can be. But if I can make even a difference in one person's life, I've done a great job. I'm honored that I've been able to do more than just one person. Oh, yeah. I had to start with myself first. Yeah, and that's so important to remember yourself because without protecting, empowering, and taking care of yourself, you can't be there to take care of and empower other people. Well, not only that, you become a hypocrite. Why are you going to do everything for everyone else and not for yourself? I'm like, oh, oh, well, wait a minute. Hey, yeah. So if I'm going to do it for others, I'm certainly going to do it for myself. And then it was like, okay, it's not hypocritical. It's I need to be able to help myself because not everyone knows how to help the one who helps everyone else. They'll offer, if there's anything I can do, I'm here for you. They mean it. They just don't know how. So, you know, in that way for me and doing this my whole life now, I've learned that the more love, compassion, energy, and attention I give myself is no longer narcissism and self-realization. Can I give what we do not have? And again, most of us run on empty. I'm like, eh, I didn't like that feeling because I had that quite a bit until I got my solid validation. And then mm -hmm. I started my soul even more, which keeps expanding and more. And the more I expand, the more I find myself, not lose myself. It's mm -hmm. phenomenal. And, you know, on this planet, hey, you're spreading yourself too thin. You got, yeah, well, that's for this physical reality. Metaphysical, everything is one. It's amazing. Amazing. That's my high. Big time. For sure. And I just missed a call from someone, which was unintentional. Um, I'm trying to take calls on this computer so we can hear them better because Skype has effed me over as far as um, my subscription to them. Yeah, a lot of people having that challenge, especially with radio shows, you know, and the networks themselves. And ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for my lack of awareness. I'm not going to be able to be here for the last hour of Tessa's show, but I am here for this next hour. So, again, I wanted to uh, honor up and apologize. Next time I'll know it's a three-hour if she's gracious enough to have me back. Oh, I would love to. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to call uh, this person back really quick. But in the meantime, um, we have another question. What oneness are you referring to? Consciousness is an aspect of one's spirit. I just don't know. Uh, to me, consciousness is of everything. Scientifically, they're proving that the entire universe is consciousness. It's all energy, and we're all connected. So I just for me, I just kind of equate like everything, all the universe is like the big old ocean. Everything is allowed to be because it's all within the ocean of consciousness. You know, and it becomes relative. Things only hold the value that you place upon it. And so as I started working with this and, you know, getting a lot of that insight, I started seeing again that everyone's got the ability. It's, do they want to even use it more or what level do they want to take it to? And for you, Tessa, how have you been? Have you seen a lot more people over the past number of years starting to activate and work with their abilities more? Or has it been consistent? Has it changed? Um, I've seen an increase in people uh, being aware of their powers and um, trying to build upon and use them, so on and so forth. Um, before it was really quiet, you know, growing up as a kid like you did. Um, with my family, it was normal, but I lost my mom when I was five, almost six. Um, and then I felt like it was normal, so I'd share it with anybody and everybody. And then I'd lose friends that way because they're like, wow, you're crazy. And uh, what the heck are you talking about? But um, today it does seem like there's more and more gifts and there's more and more people realizing it and building upon it. And were you sharing information about maybe the friends when you were younger? Like, were you giving them psychic information or it was just the way that you were talking? Like, oh, you know, or was it both? Um, I was telling them my experiences as well as, you know, just different messages I was getting. And they're like, all right, this chick is crazy. Um but yeah, on that note, I actually have the caller here from area code uh, 425. Who are we talking to? I'm talking to Robin. Hey, Robin. How's it going? Hey, Robin. That's going good. Did you have a question okay. for Jamie? Yes, I do. So, um, I'll be writing a short story, and I'm just wondering um, how it will turn out. <laughs> uh, well, finish it first. What genre? What's your short story? Robin. McFly. Hello. Can you hear him? Not too well. He said, uh, what genre? Um, what story what, are you uh, working on? Yeah, is it uh, suspense? Is it it's really about it's... secret societies is going to have... Which is uh, magic practitioners, uh, werewolves, uh, basically a, a lot of hunters for um, a lot of hunters and, uh, and vampires in it. You know, it's interesting. That's it got some potential to it. I still feel like you're still fleshing it out, but yeah, you've got some potential. If you do this, if you choose to do this short story, there's going to be another one. You actually vibe with three different short stories. Doesn't mean you have to at all. If you don't want to do any of the others, that's fine. But if you choose to do this, you're going to parlay it into something else. Now, in addition, just because something's offered doesn't mean you have to choose it. But if you do this, Robin, okay, don't be surprised if a little ways down the road, maybe a number of months, okay, after you get it complete and either published or written at least, that there'll be somebody who's like, Robin, you know what? I think that's a great story. Hey, do you want to team up? Let's write something together. And you'd be like, Wow. Well, this person's not going to ask you to have fun unless you can bring to the table what you're saying you're doing. What that tells me is if I'm picking that up as a potential, again, just because it's offered doesn't mean you have to choose it, but there's a very, very strong potential that it will be offered to you. So when it does, you like it, check it out. If not, not right now or not at all. Now, as you're talking, you also have a little bit of knowledge of some of that stuff and know that it's real. Correct. Okay. Okay. I will tell you, Robin, <clears throat> you would be surprised at the organizations and companies and governments that use people who use their abilities. You want to check out some? I do remote viewing as well. I was trained by Major Ed Danes. If you want to check that out and see, he worked for, you know, the military because there's no such thing, really. They used us as point guards. 
we'd be vibing with that energy and see on the spectrum. We know up, oh, there's two off to the right over this hill. There's one behind this rock over here and one in the ground with that pit. And then you could flank it and literally take them out easily. And again, when you do that, that can save lives. And, you know, in this case, as a human awareness at the moment, we're having to, you know, hurt each other and all that just to try to live together. Whereas soon it's going to be the unified oneness with love and compassion. It's not like, oh, it's all. No, but it will be a lot more productive rather than destructive. Uh, Does that help? I'll do that. Okay. And if you're interested, if you, what do you want to do with this short story? What do you, do you want to get it published? Do you want to just write it for yourself? What, what's your intent? What do you want to do with the story? Well, um, what I want to do is copy it and, um, and, um, try selling it. Okay. Perfect. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Cause you have the right intent. A little bit of a challenge though, is you're still seeing my, I hope it's going to sell, but I'm going to try to sell one. And what what we don't necessarily realize is the way you're approaching it, you're going to get it. For me, if you're interested, I create a future memory. Okay, and what I mean by that is for those who know me, they know that each and every night, like last night, I mentally was already at the end of this following day today with this very intent from my beingness through everyone else's energy field, whoever chooses to vibe with it, no manipulation, co-creation, and back to my energy field with gratitude of being of service. And I share with them, here's my intent that I send through that energy and back and verbatim, word for word, the people are co-creating this with me. And what my intent is that each person for their own choices, reasons, circumstances, and needs will magnetize to me in every way that I may be of service to them. And by the time they leave my presence, they will feel more loved, connected, directed, and validated. And I'm willing to bet they might feel a little of that, and I didn't make them do that like I didn't make them come and see me. And they're like, uh, yeah, that was for my own choices, reasons, circumstances. It's not manipulation. And I don't put who it has to be sitting in front of me. I just put their soul print of consciousness. So like we have the IP address on the internet web, like I say, the SP address on the universal web. That's what I do is just read the universal web. Everyone's within it. Everything is connected, even though it seems separate. Okay. Cool. I'll so how about advice? Good. Yeah. And put it to the test. Once you start to get some validation, okay, now it's real. Now there's something. Oh, I sold a billion copies. And remember, Robin, it's about vibing. It's about feeling how that success feels or that career is even when it's not there. The ability to feel as though something's there even when it's not. That's the biggest key to success because if you can vibe with that success, you're now sending out that vibration that will bring you people's circumstances and experiences to get you more of the vibe that you're sending. If you someday it and you don't accept it as already attained, the universe is always forced. So it'll be like, oh, Robin, you see it as someday. Oh, you see it as trying to hopefully get at least one sold. And so you'd be like, God, that's the very thing I didn't want. Because even though we have the right intent, on average, a lot of us will approach the problem more so than the solution. But once I was getting some validation that if I ask for things and then accept it and vibe with it and feel if it's there, even when it's not, then I'll get it, good. And we all do that daily, feeling and knowing that something's there even when it's not. Like our dreams and aspirations are nowhere in sight, right? More than likely, nor is your vehicle, nor the money in your bank account anywhere in sight but i'm willing to bet your response to that is with certainty well of course i have really because like anything else it's not there my thing is, is do you see how you go well of course i have that vehicle or the money in the bank account take that very same of course i know to anything else that you want to do but you got to be able to hold that vibe of what it is Okay, and, and people come to see me and they'll be like, and I've seen the secret and I see it all around. I'm like, great, how's it working? And they're like, it's not working because you'll still see it as the illusionary aspect, not vibing with how it feels to have that abundance or fun or success or books being sold or the short story being turned into a movie. I can feel it in the back of your energy. Isn't that a nice potential? It has the potential. How much do you want to nourish it? What more you give it is the more energy it has. 
Cool. Do me a favor and think about journaling some of the experiences that you're going to be having. Just like a date, a time, and a quick you know, expression of it. And if you don't like writing, talk into your phone and record it. That way when you play it back, it's vibing with exactly that moment and all the energy rolling through it. For me, I've done that and it helps out. Because when I write, it's like, oh, I go so mentally quickly, man. It just, throp. So I have my own ways of doing it. However, whatever works for you, Robin, do it. Just put it to the test so you know it's a little more solid instead of, oh, yeah, that's for it and you get it all right. Well, if you can hold that vibe, you can. Remember, you got to be able to know what it feels like to have that. People are like, I'm a gazillionaire. And my response is, do you even know how that feels? Because if you <laughs> don't, you know, I believe it. And more than likely, you may not attract it. Make sense? Good. Congratulations. Get that creativity Thanks. moving. You got it, man. Do it. Once you get yeah, it, there's well. like... Good. As you do that, you know, Tessa, for me, I was like, okay, when I got my white rose, as we were talking about, I was like, okay, I got that. So, you know what, if I can get a white rose, I, I want a vehicle. I want some freedom. Within a, a month, I got a vehicle. It wasn't new. It was used, but it was freedom. It was a vehicle, man. And I went from eh, not even dating to starting to have fun. And yeah, and I could enjoy that because I wasn't riding 30 miles a day on my bike. Literally, I was in great shape, but uh, I didn't date. So in being able to do that, and once I got it, then I was like, okay, if I can do that, then I can do this. And you know what? I also want my career to be what I'm doing now. And the goals and aspirations of what I set. Before, when I started doing this professionally 19 years ago, I would hear of John Edward and James Van Prague and you know uh, a few others. I don't think James did scientific studies, but uh, John and uh, others did. And I said, you know... A big sign of my success would be if Gary and Rhonda Schwartz ever asked me to be a part of their team. Well, it took me about 15 years, but the very thing that I set as a feather in my cap, Gary Schwartz comes up to me because I was doing a presentation for the Afterlife Conference, and I, I'm very honored to present a great organization. But he comes up, and I was talking to the guests in the bar area, and we're just having a nice time. He's like, excuse me, uh, I apologize for the inconvenience, but may I talk to Jamie? And they're like, well, of course. I said, excuse me, folks. I'll be right back. And so he walks us over, and he's really excited. He's like, uh, Jamie, I would love for you to be part of this scientific team. I was like, friggin' A, you're on. Let's do it. And so being able to do that, that was huge. That was, it's not always going to happen instantaneously, for me at least. But within that, I held that vision. I knew what it felt like to feel that success and see him asking me. And even though it took a while, I still vibe with that. And I got the end result. It's not like, oh, I got to die to get it or I got to do it my whole life. No. Start with the little things first. Universe, I'd like to see somebody let me in in traffic and thank you that I've received it. Good. And there you go. Once you start getting more, because my thing was a parking space in the front. Before I would ask for things and give gratitude, I'd get lucky enough to find a parking space up near the front one or two times out of ten, seven or eight, I'll walk. And then I started asking for things and giving gratitude, and I went from one or two times up in the front to seven or eight times up in the front. Not only that, I saw the co-creation with other people and their realities, not the manipulation. Meaning, I'm going down this one aisle, there's no open spots. All right, whatever. I'm the first one to come around this next aisle. And coincidentally, luckily, there is none. It is precision. This person right up in the front pulls out, and I pull right in. Whoever that person was of their own reality and circumstances could have been shopping 10 hours, bought thousands right. of stock talk forever for okay, as long as... Advice. You got it. Good. And once you, you do, so, it'll be, be a lot All more right. to go well, if I can. Yeah, you can do something else. Have a good night. You, you too, well. man. Rambling. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Bye. Good night. Good night. See, and I love that because he's got a lot of potential, you know, and, and just in him doing, I could feel his energy shift like, yeah, let's freaking put it to the test. Perfect. Because once you get it, then there's a little bit more solidness and then you'll be able to have fun from there. Anything else? Do it. For sure. And Christopher was asking me to ask you, um, 
everything you see in this realm doesn't look dark. It's like looking at yourself during the day. Uh, I don't under I don't understand what he means by that. Yeah, me either. Okay, let me repeat it. Ask him. Everything you see in this realm doesn't look like dark. It's like looking at yourself during the day. I I I don't have a. I apologize, Chris. I don't understand. Uh, I don't know what you mean on that. Yeah, that kind Light of went and, over my head as well. Yeah. I wish I knew what he was well, saying. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I don't know how to respond to that. I'm not quite exactly sure what that's meaning. BTO was wondering, uh, Jamie, have you met the creator of this universe? And with regards to multiple universe, are you referring to the parallel universe, which is inside this universe? Or are you speaking of this multiverse that consists of unique universes? All of it. All of of the above. (laughs) And I can only speak for me, but I have had my spiritual experiences of unification. Every time I do, I'm out of this physical body. I'm just like one big eyeball of consciousness. I don't have a body, nothing. It's pure consciousness. And I am connected to the oneness. Everything. It's freaking crazy cool. Like everything. There's no separation in any way at all. And the reason why the average person isn't allowed to remember what it's like when you get out of this physical body is the unconditional love that is everywhere and around us and through us. And there's no judgment in any way at all on the universe's part. Each and every time I have that experience, the words that come to me during that are, who are you now? I'm like, holy crap. I don't even know when we were created as beings. Whatever that is forever is completely loved and accepted. It becomes you become the, your judge of yourself, man. It's all good in the universe. But yeah, through the universe, it is the oneness. And I can only speak from what I'm aware of, but that's about it. And yeah, I've connected with the entire ocean to the best of my comprehension. So the interior and the exterior universes and far beyond that, there are parallels and many others. Kind of like our chakras too. There's infinity chakras within our spiritual body as well as our physical, metaphysical body. Yeah, and somebody was saying earlier, you give Jesus too much credit, but I think Jesus was a spiritual, well, I don't know. We're spiritual beings having a human experience, and he was, I don't know. He was a spiritual being having a human experience. Like, he made so many mistakes, but he did so many wonderful things, and I really look up to him for that, but none of us are perfect. Like, even he wasn't perfect. He even pushed his friend off the barn and killed him as a kid. At least he was able to resurrect him, but still, you know, he made mistakes, just like we do, and and we all, you know, need our kudos, and I I really look up to my big brother Jesus, and, and I look up to him for all the things he did in his way of thinking, you know. It really opened my eyes to a lot of things. And how compassionate. Once you've gone through it, now it's like, no, I understand. Because he's never been about, to my awareness, never been about judgment on us. And, you know, I, again, in the scientific studies, it brought up a lot of interesting dynamics. Because for myself, just a question for you. Do you really think that the human-looking Jesus looks the same when he's on other planets? Because... If he does, and he's a human on every other planet, that would be like every other world's ascended masters or whoever you want to call it that are purple and eight heads and 90 arms would be coming here. It would freak people out. It becomes love and comfort. So, oh, is that how you see it as a human form? Great, because we're truly pure energy. Does that give you comfort? Good. Hey, that's why the angels as well. They look human. All of these are human-looking beings. I'll guarantee you, not every planet looks the same as we do. Mars, yes, human-looking, and a variety of other ones. But nope, most of them not. People get a little uneasy. What do you mean? I'm like, what? It's just a vehicle. It's just a body. That's it. It's the vehicle you get around in, and that's on this planet. Well, even when you came back, you know from being resurrected and spoke to Mary and whatnot, he didn't look like himself. He looked like somebody else. And it's kind of like the spirit going into another vessel or whatnot. Um, And we're even told when we go to the other side, we won't look like ourselves. We'll be pure and whole and, 
you know, basically perfect. Um, so he didn't look like himself when he came back and was saying, you know, it is me, I'm Jesus, I'm not a ghost, and so on and so forth. Um, he didn't look like Jesus, he had to explain that he was. Um, so you don't automatically come back the way you're supposed to look. I don't know. It's really strange and awkward stories, but I could understand the struggle that he was going through. You know, and that's the point. It's not easy, especially when you have that kind of an awareness and you want to help humanity, but you can't push it. If they don't want help, then don't help them. What the? Why are you going to push your beliefs on somebody else? Nobody knows better than you. Yours is just as real as mine. I have no, you know, that's the point. And guess what? We're both sitting here vibing with this experience. You know, I just playfully, a lot of people perceive, you know, sometimes that you need to know the name of God to be okay. And my response is, wow, if that's the case, then I guess all the other languages on this planet are screwed, huh? Because they don't have the same vibrational pattern of, in this case, English. Like, no, a rose by any other name is still a rose. It doesn't right. matter. Oh, it's just a label. Oh, is that thingamajig? Really? Is that it? Okay, good. Perfect. <laughs> JC did, right? He knew it was never him. He's just a vessel going, ha, huh, bada boom, you're healed. That's it. He said, hey, it's the big guy rolling through me. He, she, the all encompassing oneness, the matrix. So that was that kind of thing. And like I shared, is, you know, again, just my awareness, he blends in the Christ consciousness. He's just in the physical body as a being so that we can comprehend it. It's truly pure consciousness. But within that, all of these other worlds that are connected, do not kid yourself. We're all interconnected. All you need to do is to be able to tap into those frequencies, and you can go anywhere. I've done remote viewing, and you only sound like a nut job till it's validated. I'll tell you, we've been going to Mars for the past 30 years. They have water. They have plants. They have all that stuff. What they've shown us is really lovely, but that would be like us putting a rover in our desert. Nope, that's all there is. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> planet's water. Mm, that's yeah, we haven't explored the whole earthly planet as well as, you know, the underwater planet. We haven't explored even, what, like 70, 80% of it? Like, there's a lot of it unexplored, and we're finding new species, like antelopes with gills and all kinds of different strange stuff going on. Like, why does that exist? Who knows? And stones, new stones. They've come up with one, I believe, fairly recently. I forget what the name of it is, but it's even harder than diamonds. It's going to be more expensive. And all of these years through humanity, they've only gotten these stones from meteorites and things like that or whatever came from space. They found it in the earth. They found a layer of this stones in whatever way in the planet itself. So again, great. But it's that type that everything is within us, truly. It's all one. And for me, you know, I can only do the best I can. I can only be me. But if I can live my truth, eh, you know, it's all I can do. Maybe there's something to what I'm saying. Always, always, ladies and gentlemen, question everything. Be skeptical about everything. Just be open. That's the yes, case. be open, not, but question no. it. Yes. Just question please. everything. Don't fall for everything. Question it. Um, BTO was saying, last question, has Jamie reintegrated his chakra system and why does it always have to be white? It doesn't. Nope. You do whatever you want. Just for me, I'm lazy. I want complete full facilitation as I can comprehend it. That's all I can, the best that I can. But no matter what chakra I'm vibing with or filtering the energy through, I've got to me the full, as we see colors, the spectrum. So instead of just one, I've got every one of those through each chakra. So I've got the fullness of awareness of the information vibration, basically. That's it. Just the main thing. Okay. Um, that was the last one I've taken a picture yes. of. But Excellent. this one will really blow your mind. Adnan wants to know, how many gnomes fit in your pocket, Jamie? Infinity. Infinity. <laughs> As many as you can hold. Excellent. Just like consciousness. Right. Um, and BTO said that was his last question, but he has another one. Do you know the difference between the individual unity and collective oneness? Well, I'd say that the individual unity is each one of us being a spirit that we're individualized, never individual of, but but individualized within the universal oneness. And then we have the, uh, what was it? The 
conscious. What was the other one? Individualized and something else. Um, the difference between the individual unity and collective oneness. Right, and it's all one basically. But the collective oneness is the whole ocean. The individual entity is the droplet in the ocean. The droplet is the ocean. The ocean is the droplet. To my awareness. Good question. Yes, he's got a lot of good ones. Um, and Trippin was saying, in whose eyes? But I'm not sure he's saying what he's ta saying that about. Um, Brave Sir Robin question, magic is real? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And a lot of our brothers and sisters from elsewhere... Their abilities, their knowledge in a scientific way as well, creates that magic that is indistinguishable between the real magic and that kind of stuff. Like, holy cow, that that's the stuff I like is the real magic. The amusing magic, that's nice, but that to me is redirection and sleight of hand and manipulation. The other stuff is just effortless. Floating, walking on water... Wait a minute, let's see. I believe that scientifically they are showing us that we're 99.99999999% nothing. What if JC and other ascended masters are able to understand that and they can vibe with the ability to go from 180 pounds to the effortless weightlessness through a conscious recognition of their own vehicle and be able to walk on water? And then all of you, I think the other guy was getting out and he fell in the water. He's like, hey. I can do it. Get... No. And he's like, hey, I did it. Right. All he needed was the validation it could be done. And once JC did that, he's like, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. I can do it. So now he gave the validation that he could do it. So guess what? He did it. And what if they have the ability not only to walk on water, but like the yogis and others can literally levitate. What if that's the ability is to tap into the 99.99% nothingness and become like the planets that float in space? I guarantee you that is the case as we perceive it. We're always moving. But as we float effortlessly, that's exactly how the soul for the energy cellular structure, not the soul itself. But like each of our cells, we're a replica of the universe. All that, most of it's empty space, and then there's little pieces. Good, there you go. Cosmic uh, evolution, evolution kind of thing. <laughs> it's something like that. Um, Yvonne was saying, uh, because you were talking about this new stone that they found, and automatically I go to unobtainium, but that's a metal, you know, precious metal that they need for certain things. Um, but she was saying they found mountain ranges under the earth as well as these different unique stones mountain ranges mm -hmm. uh, if you go up to, to like antarctica or whatever there's supposedly this hole and a oh, pilot went under there and found like this oh, whole it's... different earth going on which how there, how does this plant life and whatnot live but you know uh, i would have to agree with that there is this it's not a completely hollow earth but it's pretty much that kind of a connection there are beings that do live inside this planet there are beings that live inside Mars as well. Back in their day, they had a little bit more of a destruction than they could have. So it kind of devastated that planet for quite some time. Not all of them died. Yes. And, you know, there's so many things that are covered up, like with the quickness. We find all these cities built under other cities. We find these temples and pyramids under sand. Um, why not another Earth underneath this Earth? And um, what about, yep. And GJ Black was asking a general question. If this life here and now is so joyous and great, why do people have to ground and protect, protect from what, in your opinion, Jamie, to connect for readings, etc.? Why do we need protection? Who and what energy is working against us then? Well, that's up to your perspective, but for me, there are some of the oddball, challenging, as we see, kind of like humans, not everyone's all love and light, I'll guarantee you. For me, I don't need those stragglers to come around. This is all I do. There's no way I'm going to go, I hope I'm safe. I, I hope I... Yeah. Oh, that yeah. scared me. I almost jumped out of my skin. <laughs> I have it yeah, turned so... up. Blast. Phasers on stun. <laughs> <laughs> 
activation. We have a, right? Did you see me jump? I was like, whoa. I did, man. That was good. <laughs> um, we have area code 360. Who are we talking to? Hey, Tess. This is Yvonne calling. Hi, Yvonne. How are you? Aloha. Aloha, oh. girl. Oh, I've been surviving in this snow over here. I'm getting really tired of it. <laughs> I feel you. Hey, uh, I just wanted to ask, um, I had a dream, like, on the, not this past cycle of the moon, but the previous cycle of the, uh, of the, um, the, the full moon, and I had this dream, um, of meeting, uh, this Peruvian female, you know, and it, it was really kind of mystical in a sense, too, and it was like in a jungle kind of setting, but it was really interesting that the instrument that she had produced, it was entangled like with small branches, and then in the middle was like like a mirror-like object, and what it emitted was like a vibration sound. And then a few days later, a friend was saying, Yvonne, you got a new guide coming in. And then I saw, you know, and my immediate response to her, you know, was, oh yeah, I think she's Peruvian, and I think she's a female. <laughs> So I was just checking in with Jamie if he had anything, um, any, you know, intonations about it. Yeah, I feel like exactly like that. You are. You're introducing more of your team. And the good thing is, is you're questioning it. Always question things. But now you're getting, I guess, a little validation from, I think you said somebody else had said something like, oh, you were introduced to a guide. Well, in the dream state, because most of us, are open for that. Well, anything's possible in the dream state. I've just done it my whole life that I've got that open imagination in my awake state as we perceive it to be too. But for that, notice that kind of a connection and there's a lot of symbolics with the branches and I guess the mirror in that, the reflection and the branches of your awareness from the one tree, everything is branched out. But for that, now do you Feel that presence around you. Have you had any other dreams or have you asked that Peruvian person to maybe come and talk with you? I actually had a, a guide. I could see my guide. You know what I mean? And meet her yeah. and talk to her. You know, my, I have a whole bunch of guys, Jamie. You know what I mean? That I can't even keep track of them. But, you know, but I just get intimations from them. I, I'm a very strong... Um, Feel, you know what I, mean? I can feel the energy, but I don't have the clarity like other people have, you know, in terms of, well, you know, my guide is this, 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 you know, all I know is the sense that some of them are ancient shamans from, you know, very, you know, primitive times, and, and a couple of them are former family members, you know what I mean? Um, and, and that's about like what I get. And if they communicate with me, it's usually more like I, I can, I'm in, in my intuitive sense, so I can just feel it, you know, you know, inside, so to speak. Like, yes, ma'am. No. But I don't get, but the spirit, but I do get direct communication from the spirit in regards, like especially if I'm in meditation and stuff. It, that, that's what I call my little, my little voice. Beautiful. Now, do you take a visualization? How about if you do a visualization to meet your guides then? Or do you not really want to do that? Are you, If you're comfortable the way that they are, great. But for me, I wanted to know at least who my master guide was. And if you do that, if you do the visual, you know, ask them questions. And then for me, because, you know, I had created my own spiritual room. And yeah, here's a quick thing if you want to do it. You know, it, see yourself in a beautiful garden. Feeling the cool grass beneath your feet, the warmth of the sun, the cool breeze upon your skin. And in the middle of this beautiful garden are two comfortable benches. You know, you instinctively. Know, when I ask a question, it's changed now. Before I used to hear my little voice, you know, my still small voice, like talking to my heart. Now I have to hear my little And you get information? And I get a jerk, you know, in my diaphragm area. So, see, now you have your technique. When you get a jerk in the, that, it's a good thing. 
Right. Each way yeah. you'll find your own unique way to read the energy. That's the point. What right. you're the own. Go ahead. And congratulations. Keep the connection and make it stronger. Mahalo. Mahalo. Big gift. It's beautiful. You know, and I'll have people who come to me and, and some have been trying to find out their guides' names for years. They're like, God, they just won't give me their name. Mm-hmm. And my response is, well, then give them a name. Don't we do that to our beautiful children? Don't we do that to our animals? What if that's the case? They want you to be comfortable. What do you want to call me? Really? Good. Rose Benita, the name is still Rose. And they don't really care what you call them. Just connect with them. That's the point. Well, and a lot At of least- times if you're in tune, you'll come up with the right name. I've heard of people saying, well, we call this spirit this, and then come to find out that was actually the spirit's name. It just kind of comes to you intuitively. And like you were saying earlier, listen to your gut. And I believe that for the longest time, my gut has never led me astray. My heart has, my mind has, because my mind overthinks things. My heart wants certain things to happen, but my gut knows what is what and what is true and has never led me astray. And so I tend to listen to that. If it says go this other way on the way home from work, I'll take a different path instead of going the same way. And then you find out there was a major accident or whatever, like, you know, you could have been a part of that. Just always listen to your gut and know it's there to lead you the correct path. Listen to your intuition, your gut intuition. That's a big thing, that gut feeling. And feelings are different than emotions. Emotions are happy and sad. Feelings are information, like I feel like it's the right thing to do, or I don't feel like I should go that way. Perfect. You'll feel your way through life. Those feelings become that. And one feeling to me is worth a thousand words and then some. And when I do the mediumship, that kind of a connection is powerful because when I, I have clients around the world, so when I bring through loved ones, not everyone speaks English. They'll be coming through with Italian or Japanese or whatever the beautiful language is. And it will be like, ah, thank you. That's a beautiful language, but I don't understand that. Please make me feel the information and now anything coming out their mouth energy wise is in English. It's a universal communicator. I was like, Oh, because otherwise for me, I was getting stuck and well, I've got one language. I, I, I don't know what to do. And then I was always second guessing. But once I got that and that language of the soul became the feelings of information of communication for me, I now are just like you. I feel that gut feeling and it's usually correct. That's the point. And it's tempered with the love because to me, love allows everything to be. That's the point. And love of itself already is unconditional. So many of us beautifully and graciously say unconditional love to you, which is nice. But by the fact of saying that, you just put a condition on it. Right. (laughs) Uh, Unbeknownst to you, you just put a condition upon it. Well, you know, in, 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 in that way... The ability to get more of what you're looking for and then get it is a big thing because most of us will survive life rather than live it. And when you do that, you know, you start to get frustrated and then you get tired and worn out and all of that. But when you start to put things to the test, you get some of that validation. And just like you know, Tessa, is uh, I've gotten a pretty strong pattern here because when something's feeling like that, it's usually playing out like that. Because when it feels like that, I know I'm not going to do it. Or if it feels like this, I am, you'll be get those feelings, those gauges of interaction with other people. And those, go ahead. Um, well, time is an illusion was saying my gut is wrong. Sometimes I haven't yeah, learned to really listen to it very well, but we do do that. You know, like I was talking to you earlier, we're able to give other people advice and the messages they need. But when it comes to ourselves, we tend to second guess it and think we're trying to manipulate it for the greater good for ourselves and have the best outcome and think we're trying to manipulate and kind of dissuade ourselves or lie to ourselves. Um, but if you're open to it and you just listen to that gut instinct, it, it will not lead you astray. Um, but yes, but not, I, I go through that all the time. It's kind of like the ping pong match of the century, you know? <laughs> Well, see, that's what I did a lot of my life. I was like, no, I can help everyone else but me. I'm all right with that. So I kept helping everyone else but me. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. If I'm working to help others, I should be able to help myself. Click. Now I do get psychic information for me. 
I get that potential outcome. Again, there's no guarantee that things can happen and there's no destiny. Beautifully, people, you know, I'm destined to do this. And my thing is, is really, if you think you're destined for anything, eh, tell me you can't take your life now or now or now. Where'd that destiny go? Uh, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now it's like those who talk about lack, live it, dent, dent, blah, blah. So again, same old information. And ladies and gentlemen, just my awareness, that's it. I always remain humble. I just want to share information because I've gotten an opportunity to talk with you, Tessa. And, you know, like I do, sometimes it can be a little lonely. Like, oh, is anyone else experiencing this stuff? Because holy moly, <laughs> <laughs> which I got good at being able to understand myself more effectively and know that all of the stuff and things that I'm, you know, connecting with spiritually does seem to have some validity to it because a lot of people have walked away from my presence with a whole different attitude and a whole different energy. And when some Joe Schmo like me who doesn't know anything about you yet knows things about you or the personalities and characteristics of loved ones who have graduated that I never met, it either becomes really good guesswork or, you know, maybe there's something to it. Again, it's only science fiction till it's science fact. Um, um, what do you think about affirmations? Do you believe that those are effective? Like I've seen it in action and I've seen it work. Yep. What are your thoughts? That's exactly it because I put it to the test. Oh, everything's great. Uh, I started doing those mantras. And <laughs> exactly. I love that voice you do. You're like, oh. yeah, I feel like that all the time. That's why I tuned into Space Out Radio in the first place. I'm like, oh, I'm spaced out. I better check it out. And I was hooked. Save up for a perfect match, man. Don't do Don't do Everyone else, right. You know, and I've got, this is this is who I am. I don't know when I'd be anything different. And the great thing is, is I see even more people from all of these beautiful religions, whatever works for you, that are coming to me and their pain is outweighing their fear of condemnation from the big guy. You know, and a lot of them come to me going, you know, like a deer in the headlights. Uh, Jamie? I've never done this before, but I was talking to a friend and they shared that I might want to share with you. I was like, good. So, you know what? Let's just get a basic meaning of mediumship. To me, you know, just a basic meaning of mediumship is to consciously connect with a being, a spirit, an entity outside of a physical body. Is that a decent basic meaning? And they'd be like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, good. With that meaning, if you uh, talk to Jesus, God, the angels, you're doing mediumship. And I'm willing to bet with that particular style, you're hoping and praying for life-changing miracles and instant communication. Now, how are we viewing that? And they're like, uh, yeah. And then when you can bring that through and they make their connections, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know your loved one's personalities. You know their characteristics and how they'd say things. You'll know if someone's doing reading for you, you'll know if they're hitting it or they're making cheesy generalities. Trust yourself and what you feel. Question everything. I do this all day long, but don't kid yourself. I question all this stuff. And if you're going to read for me, which about 99% of the population doesn't seem to be able to get a read on me. One, because I've always got my safety mechanisms. So it's very, very, very rare that I let anyone actually get any information. Right. You have those walls up. I, ha I do as well. Um, yeah. Caden was asking... What does Jamie see for my new endeavor? <clears throat> uh, interesting, but I feel like, one, you've got some potential to it. I feel like you're, you know, yeah, of course you're just growing, but I'd love for you to feed it a little bit more of the success that you want it to be. Okay, and again, as a new endeavor, of course, you know, if things are new and okay, great, but again, it doesn't matter what you're doing. What I would love for you to think about doing is, Seeing yourself already successful. Be in the proactive state of how it vibes, not the reactive state. Okay, because most of us live in a reactive way in life, meaning if I have this job, then I feel successful. And if I have this amount of money, then I feel wealthy. And we'll wait for that outside physical manifestation to happen for ourselves to feel wealthy and loved when if you'll start vibing with how it feels before it's even there now you're sending that vibrational pattern out which will attract the people circumstances and experiences to get you more of the pattern you're sending out the vibe you send out negative thoughts you'll get them back no karma cause and effect i totally Natural agree ones. um gj black was asking if i am 
progressing in my spiritual development now in a very fast pace right now. What about my spouse is doubtful I am getting on the crazy train. Will he come along soon? We are great otherwise and have discussions, but he wants me to be very cautious to what I believe. Good. Be very cautious and be very much aware, but you're not going to make other people do that. If your spouse isn't interested, then they're not going to be interested. You're going to have to learn to appreciate and accept that for yourself, for yourself. I was married for 24 years, a lovely lady, but we went in different directions. And she knew it was real. I've been doing it all day, every day. And she booked all the appointments and all that. But she wasn't into it. I was going to make her. I wasn't going to throw my stuff on her. I don't know any better or worse than she does. That was real for her. I respected, loved her. Let it be what it is. That's the point. If you're going to try to change or you have to wait for somebody to even accept your reality, you're going to be pissed and frustrated quite a bit. I don't know anything better for anyone else, but I accept my reality as my reality. And we're always growth-seeking beings. No matter how many dreams and aspirations in life we have, once we attain them, we have more. So half the fun is the journey getting there. And most is like, when's it over? Like, well, okay. <laughs> Screw surviving life, man. I'm doing a lot more living than surviving. And no longer do I live each day as if it's my last. I live it like it's my first. Why am I going to live burnt out and it's over? No. Oh. Man, I vibe with the baby, the infancy of everything's new to my soul. It's huge. And then having physical experiences where I went to another state and everything was brand new. I'm like, this stuff is real, man. It is. And, you know, because I hadn't been there before. So it was all new to me on this planet. It's kind of like a, a near death experience. Like I almost died. And then, you know, you look up at the stars and like, oh, wow, I never realized how beautiful they were before. And all these things are just so beautiful to you. And, and it's like you're saying that newborn experience where you're seeing things new in a new light for the first time, like when it didn't look that way before. And the excitement, the true open receptivity of everything that's an experience, because remember, well, this is not the only planet that you've lived on. This is not the only dimension that you've experienced. On. And it's definitely not my first life. But on that note, we have to go to our second break. So you guys don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these messages. Heading to light. Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. Looking for the stories of the strange and weird that you will find hard to find anywhere else? Check out the SOR Newswire on our website. Our writers, led by Captain Shirk, are scouring the world for the oddest and most bizarre stories we can find. Everything from weird crime to suspenseful and paranormal. We're working hard for you to bring you the most intriguing news of your day. Check out the SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Hi there, this is Geraldina Roscoe from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. 
The freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social Media Freedom is the free app in your app store. No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. You know, it's hard being the bad man of ufology, but that's just the way that I like it. This is Chris George Zuger, and I'll be hanging out with Dave Scott and SOR scientist Chris Cogswell for Reality Paranormal, the second Wednesday of every month. And our job is to break it down and come to conclusions as to what is really going on in the supernatural world. I'd love for you to join us right here on Spaced Out Radio. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. We are getting ready to relaunch the SOR Space Travelers Club at space.radio.com. For $5 a month, you can join us for a plethora of features found nowhere else. Hang out in a private chat room during the show and after party. You can check out some exclusive content and a store specifically for you, as well as a private listener forum where you can post your thoughts, stories, and pictures. The SOR Space Travelers Club, coming soon to spacedoutradio.com. Do you want to know what's really going on in your world? Do you have questions about who you can trust in the mainstream media? Then look no further than the Rebel Planet. Come get the straight answers right here at spacedoutradio.com. Join me, Jamie Sexton, creator of Rebel Planet News, as I fill you in on the stories behind the stories. All you truth seekers, be sure to tune in to Rebel Planet on spacedoutradio.com the third Thursday of every month. Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. Escapewatches.com there is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Are you interested in advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Head to our website at spacedoutradio.com and click on our advertising tab. There, you will find an assortment of ways you can get your product out there with us. From radio commercials to banners and social media, have a product you like our hosts to endorse? We can do that too. Visit spacedoutradio.com for more details. Hi there, this is Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and I want you to come on a nightly journey. Starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, every Monday through Friday, you can come hang out with me and the other space travelers. We have it all from Carl the Alien bouncing on by to those misfit gnomes causing havoc. It's three hours of fun and entertainment on those topics the mainstream really doesn't want to touch. Come get all paranormal with us at spacedoutradio.com. And together, my friends, along with our resident guitar god, Bumblefoot, we own the night. Sit back, relax, grab a drink, and listen closely. Spaced Out Radio continues through the weekend. From the mile-high mountains of Colorado, to you, listening around the world, this is Spaced Out Weekend, with Tessa Nicole Thomas. You guys, welcome back. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and Jamie tonight. Um, Jamie, thank you so much for being my guest again, and I can't wait to have you on again later this year sometime. Take it for the full ride, definitely three hours, and thank you so much for letting me have fun with you. And ladies and gentlemen, excellent questions. Keep the faith, question everything, just be open and have fun. 
put it to the test so then you get something, there's a little bit more realness to it instead of, oh, it's great. <laughs> Again, beautiful. And the biggest thing is, you know, to enjoy, have fun the best that we can. And that's why I'm enjoying this because, Tessa, you're doing this, you're having fun, but you're also reaching a lot of people. And when you can do that just by being you and at least give them food for thought, something to think about or question or feel, that's a big gift. And all you have to do is you. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate you, Tessa. Thank and you, look- Jamie. Oh, yeah. Me cool. too. And I appreciate you as well and all, all the things that you do for everyone. Like it really is a healing process to help them with connecting with their lost loved ones and finding that closure Um, Can you tell our listeners where to find you and how to contact you in the future? Yeah, check out my website at jamieclark.net. And then you can email me at insight at jamieclark.net or give me a call at 623-986-6789. And I'd be honored to be of service. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being on tonight. And I'm sorry, I thought I told you about the three hours, but, you know. My lack of awareness, I apologize, but next time we'll be on for the full ride. Yes, and I look forward to it. Like I was going to say, life gets so crazy, and it's hard to keep up with certain factors at certain points. But, again, thank you so much for being on my show. I know we've been working towards this for a while, but I look forward to hanging out with you in the future. It's been awesome. Keep up the great work, and I will talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. You have a good night. Get some rest. Nighty night, love and light. Light. All right. I think we're alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. (laughs) So if you guys want to call in and hang out with me, the number is 970-335-9596. That's 970-335. Three three five nine five nine six. So yeah, I really do enjoy having Jamie on. He's a really amazing light, um, very in tune with a lot of things, and oh, he's got this energy. Like I said earlier today, I woke up at four o'clock this morning. I did different random things to um, try to go back to sleep. I caught up on Project Blue Book. That was amazing. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I tried to watch the news to go to sleep. That didn't work. So um, I picked up on a couple different other paranormal shows. And yeah, no matter what I tried, turn, turning down the light or whatnot, it didn't work. And then I ended up um, giving my kids a bath, my littles, my three-year-old, and my six-year-old, getting them dressed and all prettied up for our hot date on the town. And um, I took them to see a movie which was um, Legos, the movie, part two. And we had a great time at Allen Theaters. We got to hang out in recliners and watch this movie. Um, They both got a little squirmish, like Floyd, my six-year-old, is messing with the little toggles on the recliner chair. Hey, Mom, look what this does. Hey, Mom, look what that does. And Lily's uh, really reclining and starts sticking her legs up in the air wearing this dress. And I'm like, you got to put your legs down, you little lady. (laughs) But if there's anything you guys want to call in about, um, anything that's on your mind as far as the show tonight. All right. Hey, Ron, how's it going? Hello, can you hear me? Ron, you can't just be calling in to, um... Hey, can you hear me now? (laughs) I don't want to have an echo going on. Just put on your headphones. All right, so did you have a question or comment about the show tonight or something you wanted to discuss? My, my, my. 
echo and kind of uh, some reverb in the background uh, due to the volume being up on, on the show for you. Uh, we have technical difficulties. I will hang up. All right. All right. I'll see you at the after party. Thanks for calling, Ron. It was good to hear your voice. Talk to you later. I'm wondering, should I kamikaze call someone? I'm surprised that somebody called. Generally, in the past, um, when I've asked for people to call, like I'd ha- have all kinds of people call in. Um, but in the most recent past, let's see. BTO! BTO, good to hear from you. Hey. Uh. On, on the uh, SOR speaker. Um, hey, Andy, how you doing? I'm not I apologize. Um, uh, tonight's show was 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 really good. Um, and I learned. I always learn different things. I know everyone is on different paths. I asked uh, multiple questions, you know, but it, you know. The, Speaker chat room goes by so quickly. Baby party wasn't aware of uh, some of the questions that I asked. But thank you, first and foremost, thank you for asking uh, my questions. Uh, I really appreciate that, and I, I am really grateful for that. And thank you to Jamie for answering those questions the best that you could. You know, don't worry, I'm not a curse. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Holy cannoli. Holy cannoli, eh? Forget about it. But, um, uh, you know, I, he shared a lot of stuff that I'm aware of. Um, 19, 20 years of being aware of that stuff. For me, it's about progression. You gotta, you gotta expand yourself, you know. And notwithstanding, certain people have this tendency of uh, staying stagnated. Um, and you know what I mean. And uh, that becomes an issue, you know, especially with me because I, I try to broaden my horizon with everything. That's why I ask multiple questions and. Um, and I, I, I listen to everyone. Shit, I, excuse me, I'm sorry. I apologize. That's no, I've been hearing that word on, on cable no. like quite a bit, and I'm like, okay, how come we can't say that word because I'm hearing it on cable television? Um, but yeah, no worries. Pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. No, no, but I, 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 I caught myself, so Good I job. apologize to FCC. You know, but um, at, at any rate... Um, you know, one has to expand one's horizons, not stay stagnated, you know, and, 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 and look, yeah, it, it was a, it was a decent show. Yeah, sure, Joe, I yeah, forget about it. <laughs> um, um, but, but it, it was a decent show and I asked a lot of questions and I just, um, I, 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 I wish that he expanded more into the questions that I asked, but I, I, I can I can understand where he's coming from. I can I can I can I can feel his you know his his way of being and and and, and, and um, what he knows, you know, and I respect that. 
you know, so for me, it was a, a really good show. And uh, I don't know if you have another call. I don't want to take too much of your time or anything like that. But, you know, that's why I ask questions like, uh, do you know the creator of this universe? Have you been beyond this universe? What's the difference between our universes and being unique universes in the multiverse? You know, things of that nature. Because that to me is, you know, it makes a whole difference for me. You know, but that's who I am. You know, I know a lot of things that I share, or a lot of questions that I share is so far fetched, so far reaching that, you know, people consider me crazy. No, you got it. You got another call. Okay, okay. Well, it's okay. I can call her back, but um, I just wanted to say. No, 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 no. I was no, telling no. Jamie, you know, you have a lot of questions, and a lot of times you apologize for it, which I never want you to do because I appreciate your questions and your perspective and your state of mind because. We don't know everything, and we're kind of learning from each other. And so you think of questions that I don't think of. So I appreciate you asking them because it expands my horizons, it expands my mind, and helps me to learn other things. And I really do appreciate you calling in or asking these questions in the chat room and doing so. And don't ever apologize for it because I do appreciate it. And I don't ever look down upon you for it. And I don't condemn you and judge you for it. Like, I really actually enjoy your questions and I love hearing them and asking them. So thank you so much for doing that, BTO. Well, well, thank you. I'm very grateful. And these guests have to, you know, stop calling me a woman. I ain't a, <laughs> I ain't a woman. <laughs> or BTO. Uh, and she's got a good question. And I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh, anyway, you 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 had you have another caller. So thank you for your time on air uh, for me to uh, allow to express myself, and I appreciate that so much. And you know, we'll we'll talk later in the after party, and uh, that's the case. But go ahead, pick up the other one. Well, I love it. and appreciate we'll you, tonight. and thanks again for calling in, and thanks again for asking your questions in the chat room. I really do appreciate you. All right, talk Thank to you, you soon. All right, we'll talk. All right. Bye-bye. All right, so let me call Sterile back, because she just tried to call in. Oh, we get to hear the ringtone. Everybody do happy dance. She just called. <laughs> Dara, where are you? The person whom you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. Oh. oh, well. Well, maybe she'll call back. Let me message her really quick. And I shall say, Hey, Daryl, where'd you go? Oh, here she comes. All right, got her. <laughs> okay. I've been playing it. Hey, Daryl, hey, sorry guys. I had to hang up on you because Skype, the way it is these days, I couldn't take your call. But I called you back. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you okay. now. Great, great. Yeah, I liked your guest tonight. Um, I was going to change the subject, though, because there was something interesting, um, if I could. Yes, about please. About the UFO in um, Turkey today. Did anyone hear about this? The um, UFOs in Turkey? I think I saw something on it. I don't think it was today, but yeah, please inform us. Oh, well, actually, I wanted just everybody, like, to stare this together, because I haven't had a chance to look at it, but it's, it's buzzing, so it must have been quite, it's quite believable and incredible, and the people I've talked to so far have said that um, it looks like the real deal, including the inhabitants, which are ETs, and you can see them. Isn't that something? Yeah, and we have so many of these happening and people just denying it. Um, so I'm going to type it in as well. UFO in Turkey today. And I, I okay, I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning, so I'm kind of hazy. But I do remember seeing something like that on 
um, YouTube or somewhere. I should have put recently. Recently. Yeah, it was four days ago. So I don't know if it's yet with the airport. I don't know if it's still going on April 29th. No. Two hours ago. Huh. I think it's not worth it. I wish I could have a bite for two weeks. Yeah. Trying to do it like the Winchesters. Oh. How the heck do they do that? <laughs> yeah, that was a bit specific enough. Well, 14 hours ago, there was two locations, one in East Indonesia and one out of Turkey. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It's six hours ago. I guess I should play the first one. But nobody's mentioning the first. I had it. For some reason, I'm being blocked to go into chat rooms on Spreaker. And I have the link in the Spreaker on, on the other show. I don't know. I just have it in history. Okay. Yeah, well, looking here right now, trying to find it the same time you are. Um, oh, I did post a conference, by the way. The UFO conference. Um, not the UFO, the Unconscious Life Expo. Uh-huh. How'd that go? That was oh, it was awesome. God, these are great. I know what I did. I met Gigi. Gigi's awesome, of course, you know. He's so much fun and such a great guy. What a great guy. He's a better in person than he is even, you know, on the air. He's so charismatic and charming. And I wound up being on this floor um, next to the smoking terrace, which was like the entire floor by the courtyard. And that's where Jimmy Church and his crew would smoke, right outside my terrace, right? Mm -hmm. So I got to meet them. They were really cool. Um, Rita, that's his, like, wife and, I think, producer. And the friend Karen, um, I, but I didn't really know much about them, so I'm excited to really try to listen to him. You know, we gave a great show. And he was so great. It was a great panel. And there was Linda McNeil and David Adair. And uh, a tribute to the guy that wrote, um, what's that movie called? <laughs> That today I missed the... Okay, I had two bummers this week. First one was on Tuesday, and I didn't get to go see the Bob Seger um, farewell tour on Tuesday in Albuquerque. Oh. And then oh. the second one was I didn't get to go see the MUFON conference in Denver because I didn't get a big enough heads up, and that was tonight. And Travis from uh, Lights in the Sky or whatnot, Fire in the Sky, he was oh. there. And so I really felt like I missed out. Um, my friend from my team wanted me to go, and I was like, oh, man, had I more, you know, in advance then? notice, I could have gone, but yeah. I didn't. Where was it? This was in uh, Denver, Colorado, I believe. Um, it was a oh, MUFON right. conference. Yeah, I'm sure you were hours away. Where did you go? I'm about eight hours away. Oh, 
Oh, oh, okay, that's a little different. That's but I still would have gone because then I would have got to see my Kit Kat and had my chili cook off with her and <laughs> maybe did some replays this weekend oh. and met some new contacts and got to meet Travis because I've been trying to get him on the show for so long and meeting somebody personally oh, one-on-one, oh. -on -one, they can feel your energy and gain some more trust oh. on you and perhaps share oh. their experience instead of me just emailing or messaging him I and could, him deciding sure. yay or nay, you know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, I want to go to all of them now, you know? I, so I like to do the conflict in the desert. The conference in the desert. Yeah, contact in the desert. Contact. Conflict in the desert. Yeah, I want to go to that one. I got to recheck my dates on that one and see if I can go. Because it's not too far from me, and if you go, that'd be cool. Because then I can meet you and meet Gigi and other people. And like you said, it's different meeting these people on the internet and on the air and meeting them in person. Like when I got to meet Dave Scott, the creator of Space.Radio at the UFO conference in San Francisco this last year. And uh, Gogo -Go Teresa and Eric with a K and um, Grant Cameron and all these great people. Like... You get to see another side of them and become more personally connected, and it's just amazing. And this is a little too crowded. I mean, there are hundreds of speakers and hundreds of rooms and hundreds of vendors. I mean, it was so like huge. It was huge. So you didn't know what to do, and you know, to go to a panel was like ninety dollars. So you had to choose wisely. You know, which ones you got to go to. And I just went to the ones that, you know, I pumped the money down for the the best speakers, like, like, the ones I was interested in. Of course, the panel I mentioned, and um, I got to see Dave at a dinner on the last day, speaking about, he, you know you know what he's doing? Uh -uh. He's going to the Saudis. They hired him to go to, to the moon. Oh, jeez, don't do it. <laughs> had a new job and a new wife. Andrew's saying so Tessa's doppelganger can, can take over while she sleeps. I'm like, sleep? What is that? I can, yep. I'll sleep when I die. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's yeah, that scary. Really interesting. Can you believe that? Like, he sold, sold out to the Saudis. They couldn't hire him here for something. He was his genius to do something interesting here. So they must have made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And now he's gone back to the moon. They can put a flag on the moon. Wow. Put a uh, up there, maybe. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Did you see the guy, the CEO for um, X, the X Rockets? He yeah. was caught recently, and it was on Space Out Radio. He was caught recently on this show. I, I'd have to look it up really quick to be accurate because, like I said, I've been up since four o'clock in the morning. But um, he was caught on the show drinking alcohol and smoking weed with this guy, and so he's got to redo. Oh his security clearances, so on and so forth, in order to continue with his, you know, X-Rocket space things, which he's the creator okay. and CEO. How can you deny him any sort of security I clearance? That. Right. I could see if he was... Was it Elon Musk? Yes, Elon Musk. I could see if he was doing, like, heroin or something terrible like that, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was it was funny the picture that was going on and and whatever. But then they're like, okay, we have to redo your security clearances, so on and so forth. And he's like, whatever. Like he's actually been sued for millions of dollars in the past for different mess ups like this, and now he's doing it again. I think he's just got this I don't give a damn attitude, and he can do what he wants because he is the creator of this epic space exploration uh, unit. Yes, he's going to fire himself, but I guess he has a little <laughs> you know. Right? Are you going to fire yourself? <laughs> yeah, you know, put himself on probation. Yeah, and they're mean, saying some other know, CEO from but, his station. But, you know, I mean, it's going to be all over the place, you know, you're going to start, I think you have to stop scrutinizing the hot smokers of the world, you know? Well, I mean, it's becoming legal in so many different states, and I know I'm not supposed to talk about this stuff, but it is an herb that is grown on this earth. God gave us different plants and seeds on this earth for us to use, and, 
you know, had it been, like I said before, heroin or some some sort of, like, methamphetamines or some other man-made thing, I I could see the... Oh, there's a picture right here where um, he took a shot. Um, I think it was Jack Daniels. Let me look really quick. I, I have it pulled up right here. But he took a shot of alcohol with, um, okay. Tesla CEO Musk was filmed sharing whiskey and a joint with Rogan during an interview with a comedian on his popular show, The Joe Rogan Experience, on September 6, 2018, which was months ago. Like, are, are they just now picking up on this? Um, an official from the Pentagon told reporters on Thursday that the Air Force referred Musk's case to the DOD, which is examining Musk's behavior. But they've had so many takeoffs and such since then, and they're talking about having different CEOs from the community take over for him instead of him doing it. So how come this is just now coming out? Let me look at the date on this. Okay, so the date on this was March 7th. How come they're just now picking up on the September uh, date? Like, you know, get the net, live in the now. There's a, there's a video. Let's see. They saw himself inside. It's pretty. It wasn't hot. <laughs> I didn't inhale. It was a cigar with weed in it. Yes, that's called a blunt trip. <laughs> oh, this is good. Oh, it's so sorry. No worries. So let's change the subject again. We're going to get that turkey video. I didn't see the most recent one, but I did see it the last couple days as I'm going to sleep. I often check into my Facebook and my emails and so on and so forth. I did see something over Turkey, and there was an, another one in another country not too far away, which you had mentioned uh, just a little bit ago. And that was really interesting because they were pretty coincidental as far as what they had witnessed. Yeah, the people are so, they all sort of pretty compelling. I believe them. Let me look I on believe them. I'm looking on my page here because I know I shared it somewhere. It could be on my Four Corners Paranormal Investigations page. It could be on my regular page, which I'm not finding it on FCPI, so it must be on my regular page because I share certain things in certain places. But, um, yeah, it's really interesting how they're doing that and um, how we're kind of still in the 40s and 50s about um, how it is evil and, you know, the devil taking over everything, which it's not. Um, but I mean, give me a break. Like, he had a shot of whiskey and a puff off a of blunt. Like, he's all right. It's not like he does it on a regular basis, but perhaps he does. And a lot of people, like the creator of The Family Guy, so on and so forth, like, they regularly partake in these things. And they have a very keen sense or large sense of or perceptive of intelligence and um, creativity so on and so forth I don't know what the whole stigmatism is about about it but there is but it's going on further and further within our society it's spreading and they're realizing it really isn't that schedule one narcotic or whatever they want to call it I watch live PD every Friday and Saturday it's really hard for me to um, oh, Ron says my Colorado accent. I've heard people come into the stores when I used to work at gas stations or okay. Walmart or whatever. You have that Colorado accent, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm from Arkansas. Okay. I've, I've lived in Miami, Florida. I've lived in North Carolina, South Carolina, Washington State. Now I'm in Colorado. Perhaps it's a um, sort of accent from all of those places. Perhaps it's not a Colorado accent. Yeah. It's great for TV and radio, you know. It's not, you know, like mine. I don't know if you notice. I have some people say I have a New York accent, but I don't think so. Oh, it's not that bad. I used to have a friend from Boston that I met at a safe house, and he he would, we went to the bar, and I left my car, and all this other stuff. <laughs> like, like your accent isn't that yeah. bad, but I do love accents, and I do love yours. Yeah. Um, and I love taking uh, of such because, again, I'm expanding my horizons. 
Yeah. Live PD does rock, Andrew. I love Live PD. It's like my guilty pleasure. I can sit at home. Before I started doing the show, I'd sit at home and drink and watch Live PD and watch all these dumbasses get locked up and DUI or um, fighting at home, you know, and all this other crap going on while I'm sitting at home safely watching <laughs> all this shenanigans happen. I'm watching some new old footage from, like, I don't know if it's Turkey. It's pretty good, though. Um, but I want to see the ones with the E.T. in it. I want to see what the E.T.s look like. Yeah. That's what I really, really good. Um, I'm going through my page right now trying well, to find yeah, it because I know I shared it. <laughs> Whoa! No, this is PGI. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was too good. Yeah, I'm, what do you call it? I can't post it because I can't get into chat. My, my computer is blocking me from chat room. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, you know, I feel like they put, like, like real stuff with the CGI stuff because you don't really know now what's real and what's fake, you know? Andy O'Brien saying, being an Aussie, I have trouble telling the difference between USA and Canada accent. Give me a break. Give me a break. An Aussie, well, we know the difference. We can see, well, no, we don't know the difference between a Kiwi and a, a New Zealand and a Australian. Yeah, I try to do know? my Australian accent, and I'm often told it's not Australian, it's British. <laughs> well, you know, they're definitely different than the I feel. Yeah, and I'm like, I you know, know, I listen to you guys all the time. How can I not have it down by now? But I guess I don't. I guess I just automatically go to um, the British accent, thinking it's Australian, even though, like, I grew up with watching the Crocodile Hunter and all this other stuff. Like, this is an annoy. This is a knife. You know, that's not British. That's Australian. Um, but I guess I probably just lapse into the British thing when I try to do these impersonations yeah. and Robert saying Brisbane <laughs> yeah. I had a guy uh, yeah. when I was in the Marine Corps tell me he was from Brisbane, Australia which is Brisbane um, he was actually from Morristown, Tennessee you know sometimes, you know, yeah. fool me once shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess that's the end of this alright I'm not this video. Oh, I saw that oh, one, yeah. Andrew. Did you find it yet? What? I'm still looking. Um, well, Andrew was I saying, know. what about the woman that passed out in a drive through on Live PD? And I remember that. She was um, just coming back from, I think it was her mother's, or it could have been her grandmother's funeral. And she was so tired and exhausted from the emotional turmoil on that. And uh, she fell asleep in the drive through and a lot of people called in on her. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't she naked or something? No, she wasn't. She was fully dressed, but she was African-American. And um, if you saw recently in the news, there was that guy that was, he had this thing, um, the satchel tied around his shoulder and down on from his right side to his left side. And he had this thing, he's picking up trash and putting it in there. And one of the neighbors called in on him for picking up trash in his own yard. And he had like eight or nine cops in his yard pointing guns at him and telling him to put the weapon down. And he's like, this is not a weapon. And the neighbor was filming it. And he's like, that's not a weapon. I'm from New York. And um, I used that to pick up trash when I was on. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And so they're basically profiling him for being a black guy in this high society area. Um, just trying to pick up trash in his own yard and keep it looking nice. And he's got eight, nine cops pointing guns at him. Robert saying the ass butt from non-Brisbane. <laughs> what? What? Have you seen um, Supernatural where the angel Castiel, at first, he's used this word several times, but the first time I heard him use it was when he's throwing the holy oil at... Lucifer, and he called him ass butt. <laughs> <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, he's like, 
take this ass butt. And, and then I heard him say it again on, on the 13th season, which I'm at the 13th, which is the last on Netflix. 13th season. What am I going to watch after this? But every time he uses ass butt, it just makes me laugh so hard because I'm like, what kind of name is that? You know, I've heard ass hat, other things like that. What the kind of name is ass butt? <laughs> Colorado, He's from heaven. Uh, did you see that, that NASA picked up a lot of interesting things on that um, asteroid? Yes, and there's been a lot of interesting yeah. readings as well. They it on the asteroid, and it, 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 they caught it for too long of a period, so now they had a report. Like, it was a, a huge spaceship. I mean, I'm not sure there's a lot of stuff that was caught on the NASA. They just released a bunch of stuff. And it's not like stuff that they were holding. That they have. But there's another question. What do you think? Do you think we really have an international space station? Do I think, think so. I think that's the main place? coordinate because I think that's where everybody comes and goes. They don't really come and go from the moon. They come and go from the okay. INS um, because it's What's below it? the line where we're not supposed to cross because they've repeatedly said if we cross this line, um, people are going to get major radiation poisoning so on and so forth um there's so much debris out there that they'll get compacted by it so many different things going on but mainly the radiation poisoning if that was a factor did we actually really go to the moon um are we really getting out there or are we just going to the international space station which is inside our outside realm um so it really raises a lot of questions did you see them, like, drowning, practically? Their spacesuits filled up with water? Because they were doing it really in a swimming pool? Um, I saw them doing training in the swimming pool for, um... Uh, they said they were on the, in the space station, and, they, like, their space suits flooded. <laughs> so, what, what's that all about? I think that was training, um, because they do a lot of training underwater in pools, um, to okay, kind of sure, sure. inhabit the space, the way space right. is, and you have that lightweightness and kind of anti-gravity stuff yeah. going on, and so it's training yeah. within the pools. Um, yeah. When I was in the Marine Corps, we did training where you're in this cockpit of a helicopter, and you go off the end of this thing, and it drops you into the pool. You have to unbuckle and get out of there within a certain amount of time, and then swim with your Kevlar and your pack okay. and your helmet right. on. Um yeah, I can see that happening because you can, I've watched different things doing night security as far as the space programs, so on and so forth go, and they do a lot of training in pools to try to imitate the anti-gravity, which why don't you just do it in these things that you have with the anti-gravity going on instead of doing it in pools, I guess it's cheaper, I don't know, <laughs> um, but it's been pretty interesting and I could see that happening, like the water flooding a suit if you don't have it sealed up correctly or if it's just yeah. repeatedly used and abused. But they were supposed to be in the space station when it happened. This is what I this is what I was wondering about. I was looking for this thing. Yeah. I have a, I had a hard time believing that this is how we launch um, our satellites. When I saw this video, I'll share it with you on Twitter. I, I can't believe that this is a real satellite launch. It looks so like bizarre. It looks like a, a, a damn like jellyfish. Have you ever seen this? Is an image of it. Um, the first time I saw the video, I was certain it was some sort of like ET phenomenon. It was so bizarre. It looked like some kind of like underwater jellyfish or something. And they're saying that's how we launch our satellites. So I'm like, what? Wait, let me see if I can share this with you on um, Facebook. You see. Well, I've heard a lot of flat earthers say that space is water and all this other stuff, which it's not. It's like a vacuum, and it'll suck the oxygen and everything else out. That's why you can't really have fire and um, all these other things in space unless you have the combustible uh, material to do so. There's not enough oxygen in space to provide that fire, so there's different like propulsion techniques you need to use as far as oxygen um, thrusters, yeah. all kinds of other things, not using fire. Um, but yeah, I don't think that space is water or the space station is in water. I think those are just programs that they're using underwater to train for space. Yeah. And I think that's where they're getting these videos. Um, and people put things out there as if they're reality when they're really 
in fact not. Not. Right. Well, I don't mm. think this link is going to work. <laughs> that link looks good. That link looks terrible. Let me try this one. Oh, and it's from Russia, so maybe that's why. It came from Russia. Yeah, and I've seen um, different training videos, and they are underwater. You can see the water bubbles going up as they're working and the waves and whatnot around them, um, watching these different NASA and whatnot videos. Um, but as far as being in space, like Mars, the moon, outer space is not made of water. It's anti-gravity. It's a vacuum. It kind of sucks everything yeah. in, especially when you're around a black hole. Um uh -huh. Except for uh -huh. I saw a video just recently where it says the black hole sucks everything in, but have you seen the video where things are actually coming out of a black hole and actually using it as a, a portal? A from the, yeah. yeah, a oh. portal from this place to that's another. Kind of that's very encouraging, I think. Like, I, you know, that's one of the theories that was going around at one point, that we're going near to this black hole and we're going to ultimately be sucked into it or something like that. That isn't a very positive thing. I, I don't want to get stuck to a black hole. That's all. Yeah, me neither. And once I heard that there was one near Earth, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're all going to be sucked in the black hole and it's going to be us in a <laughs> mess of dirt and rocks and mountains and whatever sucked in there and we're just going to be obliterated. Um, exactly, like a little piece of... Yeah, like a vacuum cleaner. Oh my. It's like a Dyson. But it was interesting um, to see, and it wasn't on YouTube... It was on Netflix, these different videos um, where they're talking about black holes and it's the NASA program and the different okay. things they do as far as um, these space programs to be able to find asteroids, connect to them, and kind of get the different I think, anomalies. I, think I thought you would land on an asteroid. Like, how do you do that? If we can land on one, why can't we yeah. see one day and stop it from crashing into Earth, you know? Yeah. But that technology, you know, to land on one, I don't see why we, we can't avert any kind of impact, you know, all the time. You know, today I thought there was something going on in my neighborhood because there was a lot of impact sounds. The sounds are really weird. And the smells. We were reporting really funny smells around the world. Mm -hmm. Worldwide weird smells. Isn't that weird? Yeah, and Trip was and just I saying... In a few million years, our yeah. galaxy will be colliding with another galaxy, which is so true because the galaxies are growing exponentially faster and faster and faster all the time. The speed of these galaxies being created is just increasing. Instead of slowing down, it's increasing. So, like, they could collide or they could bend, and there's so many different things that could happen. Um, yeah, and like he's saying... We're already landing on asteroids and collecting samples, and they had this thing that kind of looked like a jack, but it was like a square, and it would land and then tumble this way, that way, this way, that way, and then kind of dig in. Um, and that's when they finally uh, got it to where it wouldn't just like collide with it and bounce off. They were able to collide with it, bounce around, and gain its wow. gravity and cling on to the asteroid, take samples, and discover what this asteroid's made of, what exactly is in it, and there's so many programs going on out there, and NASA's not the only funder. There's personal funders for these programs because NASA can't afford all this stuff. So it's pretty interesting um, to see what they're doing. Trip says no, um, but yeah, I watched this NASA film which was talking about all the space programs they're doing. Mostly it's about asteroids, Mars, um, mm -hmm. so many different things they're what, doing. Even the programs of where they're trying to send people out to live on Mars and other planets. Like, they have these little um, pamphlets for you to read. People that they're, <laughs> people they're trying to, you know, bring aboard. Here, check out this pamphlet. Would you like to live on this planet? <clears throat> yeah, I have that. Well, you know, can I have yours? Uh, I'll swap my timeshare on Mars for the one in Cancun. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd much rather go to Cancun. Yeah, right. To Somebody be honest. Uh, <laughs> the beautiful super club. But the yeah. spinner has been created. Um, they're working on putting it out there, and they've had several ones before that trip that they have been using that are similar to it, but not quite like this little square... A rubber kind of box that they're using 
that'll land and bounce this way, this way, this way, that way, and then finally cling on. Uh, they didn't say they quite got that out there yet, but they have created it so they do have the technology to do so. Once they do that, you can not only collect the information from the asteroid, you can kind of send a bomb or whatever to thrust it in another direction if they're worried about it hitting the Earth. So it, it looks pretty promising as far as what um, NASA or the ESA or whatever is trying to do. Well, look, if they, if they have those, like, two-mile-wide UFOs, I want to get one of those, you know? Like some super shitty in space. Are you sure you want to be on one of those? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it depends on the clientele, you know? The crab might be weird. The crab but people you know, sound really delicious. On some kind of UFO ship that was like the love boat. It looked like a cruise ship, but it was up in the air. Right. I can't remember the movie. Does anyone remember it? I saw... I was watching um, The Blue Book Project last night, catching up on it. Once I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm trying to go to sleep, and I'm like, hey, I haven't caught up in the on The Blue Book Project for a while. So um, there was one that was the abduction file, and it was an yeah. African-American guy and his wife, and he came in, and the Air Force captain wasn't wanting to hear his shenanigans so he pulled a gun so on and so forth and um he's talking about how he's driving home at first he sees these orbs alien orbs which i've seen one in my life i'm so lucky that once i opened the door and stepped out i stepped back in and decided not to um but he was talking about how he saw them and then he slammed on the brakes and three of them surrounded him. Then he saw this larger craft. Then he was sucked up and they implanted this chip in the back of his neck. Um, he was having pain in his brain as far as like migraines, like severe migraines and distortion as far as his thought process, so oh. on and so forth. And and so that was interesting catching up on that and how the government tries to play good cop, bad cop and the whole thing that this guy was going through working with this Air Force captain um, trying to be, you know, the ground root of what is really actually happening in this guy kind of falling through and having to say, well, this is what this was, so he doesn't get shot or killed or his family killed or whatnot. But it's there's so him. much... Huh? I mean, they could track him now. He's, he's got a tracking device, you know? The, the implant again. him. Yeah. yeah. We'd probably have the technology to follow him now. Well, when they and were the there... Gets, in fact, it gets like another visit from the government. Yeah, when they were there, yeah, yeah. They, doc, uh, they locked the doctor and the captain into an office, and he went into the other room and told his wife, I've been feeling this lump on the back of my neck or something. Like, once he mm -hmm. got that hypnosis done to him, he remembered certain things, and he's like, can you look on the back of my neck and see if there's something there? And she found this circular... Um, pinpoint on the back of his neck so he basically forced her to cut into it and this little implant came out and they're looking at it and of course the Air Force captain is like oh that looks like shrapnel and the doctor's like well it's perfectly circle and they're looking at it and it like kind of gives this burst of light and then all of a sudden the lights start to flicker and then the military turns off the lights to the building but this thing is actually a device from the aliens or the Allens, I like to call them. Um, but well, my neighbor, my neighbor next door to me, was um, getting an MRI, and they said, "Hey, you know, you might want to get some of that shrapnel out of your knee." Was, what are you talking about, shrapnel? It came out on his MRI. Now he remembered in Canada, he had like major lost time when he was like 18 years old, and they had seen a guy driving in the other direction. Testified. And above them was a bright light and a big ship, and that's all they remember. Three hours later, they're in opposite seats on the side of the road, and, and couldn't remember a thing, and they hadn't made any progress on their trip. And not, they didn't know what happened, really. They had no explanation, and the girl got pissed off at him. She's like, what did you do to me, you know? Like, he had done something. You know, she just never talked to him after that trip. And, um... You know, he was devastated. He loved her and all that, but he couldn't explain what happened. And she didn't trust him. But, you know, years later, they they saw it underneath the, the MRI, 
and I had given him a book, like UFO Encounters or something like that, and there was a doctor in California who removed 17 of those from different people, and they were the same, same exact metal, same exact size, same device, you know, same manufacturer, you know, and they certainly weren't from this planet. Nothing on Earth had made that. And how did, you know, how can he explain, how do you, how do you get that implanted in you, you know, if you didn't see any, you know, you didn't do any combat or anything, how would he get that metal in him? Like, all of those were very much connected, but nobody's really, I think it's such evidence, that's evidence, you know? To me, that's, uh, you know, you got to collect all the data and all the, it's definitely from the abductees, I think, are the most important in this disclosure effort, you know? They have the most information, especially those who are contactees that fly, they've, fly, they've flown the plane, you know, their, their craft with their mind, you know? Mm-hmm. Or they hear the thoughts in their mind that right. sound, like I was saying earlier, it sounds like your voice, but it's not your thought process. It's this mm-hmm. different voice coming through as far as mm-hmm. their thoughts and what's coming through, even though it's in your voice because you would trust it more. Um, they're feeding you things subconsciously. That's how they communicate. That's how they control their ships. Um, it's pretty it's interesting and intriguing. It. And these little tiny, you if know... But there, he had he had come into contact with one of those symbiotic uh, technologies, and they took him to Area Fifty One. And when he touched it, it just like illuminated this blue glow. Then he thought it was heat activated, but he got—I think he got it. I asked him at the conference if he had gotten a download, and did he continue to get them? And he, he actually admitted to yes, he got a lot of knowledge that day when he touched that thing. And I think he hasn't—he hasn't mentioned it. To anybody interviewing him, I hope the next interview maybe uh, someone has with him. Like Joe Roop is pretty tight with him now. He's been on him twice already. Nice. On like Void, so maybe he'll get to um, ask him about those questions. Like, what kind of information did you get from the ET craft? You know, that's yeah. an amazing story. I recommend everybody to try to. And when I saw my first one up close, okay, the first time it wasn't so close. It was like 200 yards up in the air. looked like a little tiny ball of fire. Um, And my kids saw it at first, and they're like, Mom, what is that? What is that? Why is it following us? And I'm like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I got out. I saw it. It looked like a little ball of fire just sitting there. Um, The next time I saw it, I'm holding my newborn son, thinking of Dylan Redwine, hoping he's safe and warm wherever he's at. And then I see this ball it looks like you know a snow globe ball with liquid fire running through it counterclockwise or clockwise and it's like red orange yellow colors looks like liquid fire basically rolling through it luckily i had children because had i not i would have just stepped through that door and continued on and who knows what would have happened to me i could have gotten abducted or whatnot but i took one step out and then I was like, uh-huh. I can't do this. I have kids to raise. I have a life to lead. I can't do this. So I stepped my foot back in, closed and locked the door. I tried to get my phone to function. I had one of those flip phones trying to get the camera to work. And I was like, this isn't working. You guys, you got to come over and look at this. So my husband and my two daughters ran over. Me and my two daughters saw the same thing. To my husband, it looked like a bat, like an extremely large bat glowing flapping its wings at an extraordinarily slow rate of speed. How come it looked different to us than it did our husband? Perhaps we have different levels of intuition or communication with these things. They're colorblind, so that could be some part of it. He might have only seen, like, the gray and black parts of it, and you saw the color parts of it, you know? He saw a glowing bat, like the mammal bat, flapping its wings really slow inside this orb. Wow. trying to fly we saw an orb filled with liquid fire basically and it right. was at a slow walking pace down the back line of our fence line but i must say we are at the end of our time daryl and i'm so glad you called in oh well, thank you Tess. that was fun and i can't wait to find that video i know i've seen it but i'm wondering where it is is it another government disclosure where they're hiding things from us that we just saw yesterday just came out and they're gonna just yep they're gonna bury it it's gonna be buried in like the 10th page of a, a search you know yeah they're just That's, gonna kind of push the mute button on us and you didn't really see that that was your imagination but i saw it you saw it yep it's 
parts of fine now. How about that? And I had a link, and now I can get into the chat room suddenly. I'm like blocked from even accessing the link that I that I've been given. Maybe. Yeah, and I know yeah. I shared it on my Facebook page, but once I looked back, it wasn't there. No. Oh my God, there's a cover. Uh, there it is. That's true. Yep, they gotta oh, lie no, to us like it. we're little childrens. They're doing this very fast and very quickly. I mean, they must have inc- well, it's it's AI, you know. AI is probably doing it before anybody else can can discover it. You know, AI just jumps on and just very good. Well, thank you so and much, Daryl, for calling in this evening, and it was my pleasure having you on the show. And I'm so glad you called in. It really helped me to fill this last hour where I lost Jamie uh-huh. because he was kind of not online with the three hours. But thank you so much for calling in. It was my pleasure. Me too. Thanks, Tess. I'll talk to you later. You having a party later? Yes, I am. Alrighty. All right. I'll see you in a few. Okay, got it. Nice Good night, Daryl. Love you, sister. And thank you to everyone on Spaced Out Radio, Facebook, Spreaker, Twitter, Paranormal Radio, Talk Stream Live, Deep Talk Radio, Revolution Radio, and wherever else you may be listening in the universe tonight. I had a wonderful time this evening. It was my pleasure, literally and figuratively, and I can't wait to do it again tomorrow night for Psychic Sunday with Psychic Craig LaFleur on SpacedOutRadio.com. Until next time, nighty night, love and light to all my space cases out there. You guys have a wonderful Sunday. See you all back here tomorrow night. Don't forget, we are all in this together. Together we can make the world a little better. And together, my friends. We own the night. If you'd like to join us for the after party, the phone number is 970-335-9596. 